Hey, yo, I want to give a special shout out to Cal Dental USA. They taking dentistry to the next level. I'm wishing all the employees, you know, a real, real, real just safe quarantine, man, during this time. I know it's tough. But look, if you need a dentist from L.A. to the O.C., they got you covered, man. Like Hustle Man would say, the marathon continues. You heard? Hey, what are you doing? Sitting at work, looking at your phone, going back and forth between three social media apps. You just saw a busted looking tattoo and say, why would you get that? Or I'd just throw myself in the trash if that was on me. Well, don't wait. Opportunity is at your fingertips to get an amazing tattoo that will have your friends hating on you for having the coldest piece in the click. Call in your tat. Tina Howe is a head turner. Stop falling for that garage gangster that will quote hook you up unquote misspelling your baby's name, and making your loved one's portrait look like you ordered it off wish.com. All janky line work that's shakier than a virgin on prom night. Treat yourself like you were those melted laundry basket looking shoes wrappers keep putting out. Yes, those things are ugly but your tattoo won't be and it will look dope for a lifetime. When you're ready to get tattooed, DM me through Instagram or email bookwork310 at gmail.com. Welcome everyone to episode one of Smoking with the Wizard. Yes, Smoking with the Wizard. I won't be smoking, but most likely I'll probably be smelling it and get a contact high by the end of the show. Okay, so uh, if you guys want to get high, so high, this is the show for you. Okay, so I uh, want to give a shout out once again to Jen from Fashion Town. He just blessed me with his alley hat. I needed the new alley hat. You got to represent Jen from Fashion Town. Much love, much respect uh, to him and also to our sponsor, uh, Nacho Granny's Cookies. These are the medicated ones. She actually wanted me to give this to Be Real, so I got to give them to him. So Nacho Granny's Cookies, medicated, and soon you'll be relocated. Okay, so that's for him. And then the regular cookies which are the shit make sure you guys follow her on instagram she, uh it should be on the live chat and i already smell the smoke okay so so these are chocolate chip and then some of these if you could see them she needs to tell me exactly what the other ones are because you open them up and there's a gang of chocolate in that shit so we're going to be munching on these after i get the munchies so nacho granny's cookies once again thank you much love much respect to you and B, I'll give this to you after the show. Yes, sir. So other than that, uh, this is a man that absolutely needs no introduction. He's been here to the podcast several times. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it with uh, Smoking with the Wizard with B-Real in the motherfucking place to be. What's up, my brother? How's it going, my bro? I'm good, brother, and I'm happy that you are here and that you are blessing us today in the studio you're the first one to ever light this motherfucker up yes you told me that when when you came to visit last time that you know that next time i came on that we were going i was going to blaze up because <laughs> the first two times I, I didn't blaze up i was and I, I i would imagine that you know motherfuckers like why isn't he blazing up he usually blazes up everywhere right and that's because i respect the spot you know what i mean right. unless i'm invited to do it I, you know, I don't just assume that it's cool because, like, I don't have entitlement issues like that. Like, everywhere I own it, I got to smoke. So, you know, I try to be respectful. And when you, you know, said, hey, next time you got to smoke one, I was like, hell yeah, I got you. Hell yeah. So hell yeah. So here we are. Exactly. You know, one thing I do want to say, and I, one thing I want to thank you before we make this phone call, because we got to take this phone call. And you got to guess who it is. You know, I've interviewed so many people here, okay? 99 probably percent of the people that I've interviewed have never posted up their flyer. Hmm. Many of them literally, without saying any names, have begged me for interviews. Right. Have wanted to pay me for interviews. Right. Some people I invited never posted up. And I said, look, man, just post it up. And then if you want to, after the interview, take it down. You posted it up, man. I was like, wow. I said, it's funny how B sold records all over the world, has traveled multiple times around the world, has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and everybody else couldn't even post up the damn flyer. That, you know, I get the same thing, um, you know, as it relates to the Green Thumb show. Some, some yeah. of the peers get it. And they'll they'll post it, or they might post it as it's happening, but a lot forget, and yeah. it's it's like 
okay, I get it. You know, maybe they're not thinking about it in the moment, but for me doing it, I know how important it is for the platform that you're doing it for. You know what I mean? So like, I'm always trying to spotlight the others. And if I'm doing something with, with the person, you know what I mean? I want to make sure people know, because that's what it's all about. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like we're all, we're all put light on each other. So it's like, it's gotta be equal. Like you're having me on your platform. Hey, I want my people to know about your platform one. Cause I think it's a dope platform. Thank you. Number two, I want them to know that we're doing something on it so that they can support and when you win them over, hey, boom, it's it's people we have in common that support our platforms. Yes. Together we're stronger, and people don't really get that part. Yes, no, you're, you're right. absolutely right. So I want to thank you for that. But I want to take this phone call because uh, I told this caller that I was going to call him while you're here, and you're going to have to try to guess who it is. So let's put on these headphones for this one All call. Right. And when he picks up. Okay, you guys got me on over there? See if my guest game is down. Okay. Here we go. Hopefully. Yo. Hello, caller. How are you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm doing great. I got Be Real live here on Smoking with the Wizard. So he has Be Real. Yes. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, I'm rolling up some of this Hindu funk, man. <laughs> it's no funk, man. Is this Baby Bash? Yes, man. <laughs> what up, papa? That's his favorite weed. I knew that in a heartbeat. Yes. Bah, bah. Uh, that that Hindu funk is no funk, baby. I'm, I'm rolling some up literally right now, buddy. You almost had me for a second. You threw a little rasp in your voice. But then, right, you, you, then you said hit do funk. I was like, that's bash right there. <laughs> Dang, I knew that was too easy. Dang it. That's good. I was with them last night. Beautiful show, bro. Uh, I yeah. think two of his shows. Man, the vibe there, it's, it's amazing with these guys. You know, bash is my cousin and... Um, you know, <laughs> we're yes, like cousins. Sir, that's that's my bro right there, man. We we met years back, and we've been having a mutual respect for each other for a long time. And you know, um, he's he's the panty dropper, man. They be yeah. throwing the panties up at Bash, man. And you got to respect <laughs> the panty drops for that. Um, yeah. But um, like we always have a good time when we get together. When he comes and does this show, man, he snaps right in. We're family, so you know, salute to my bro, man. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I, I really, I really look up to B, man. He's he's the definition of class, cool, coolness, and class, man. And he does it the right way. He's a good guy. Thank uh, you, one sir. One of the best, one of the best rappers in the game. Period. I don't, I don't think they give him enough credit just on his bars alone. Every time I hear it, every time, whether it be on my out song or burner song or uh, whether he's rapping with Cube or uh, anybody, his verses are always tight. Hell yeah. Always. Type. So, Thank you, so, Bash. Uh, much, much love to be, and I, uh, I love getting on his show, uh, the Dr. Green Thumb podcast. Uh, it's, it's very fun, and, and we all get our own individual joints. I love it. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's dope. And then uh, Bash told me that he's going to come on the platform, so I have oh, to. Yeah. I have to get him on. It's a must. Yeah. Hey, you will have yeah. a good time coming and doing Rhodium Radio with Toddy A, my man. Yeah, he's another one yes, that's going to be smoking. Yeah, this is about what my third one right here. Yes, the yeah. Trinity. That's uh, so that that should tell you something, Bash. Damn, you're up three nothing on me, dog. Three I nothing, get in there, dog. Three, no, I yeah, get come on, there, it's all good. It's all good, big dog. You, you got to catch up. Exactly. You guys are so so. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it right. So you guys are live right now, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, I'm I'm on. I'm gonna get uh, after I get through taking this shit. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put on uh, YouTube. That's a lot of info. <laughs> Oh, good. Oh, good. Of, <laughs> hey, listen. You know, if you eat a lot of edibles, bash like a lot, a lot. When you go take a shit, it's gonna smell like weed. Oh shit! And shit put together. Oh, Believe shit. me, I've been there. I've been there before, doggy. I know you have. <laughs> <laughs> All good. All right, my brother. Uh, uh, we'll talk oh. soon. Thank you, man, for oh, b- being right, a part of the guys. show tonight. Much respect. I'll see y'all soon. I, I'll uh, be. I, I'll see. We got some shows coming up soon too. So I'll see you on, on backstage. We'll see you there. Hell yeah, my bro. I'll, I'll have some brother. weed for oh you, bro. God. Yeah. Hello. All right, dog. <laughs> Late. All right. That was it.
That was Baby Bash, y'all. We just, I was trying to have him disguise his voice, but I guess you caught on too quick. So yeah. <laughs> now, B, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to open up with this. Um, the Grammys, they had the old school tribute. Yeah. I, I believe they kicked it off with Melly Mel yeah. and the other legends. Yeah. Uh, did you watch it? And what were your thoughts on that tribute? I did watch it and uh, I thought it was cool. I thought they had all the necessary pioneers up in there and you know like anyone else that watched that right you know people have opinions on who was missing and why weren't so and so or this or that were there and for me i look at it like this for everybody who wasn't there or that thought they should have been there or for people who said you know in their minds who they thought should have been there quest love had what seven minutes to encompass 50 years of hip-hop yes in in a piece and that's hard to do you know and to choose what you choose you got to live with that and then you know figure it all out at the end so for me i thought yeah you know there was there was folks that could have been in there um people that were missing and all that stuff but like i understand how the grammys works it's like get it done quick and you have only this amount of time yes and you know, apparently there was some folks that they asked that 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 turned it down for really? some reason. Yeah, they never they never said who it was, but apparently, you know, they they asked a couple people and they said no, and uh, you know they kept it pushing and then trying to figure out how many how many minutes or seconds you're giving each group to get within that seven minute window or whatever it was seven in between seven and ten minutes yes yes it was it's a tough job yes. and, and it's thankless because no matter how you do it you can't please everyone no you can't you can't you, you know one thing and i want to say rest in peace true goy yeah rest in peace man. Uh, um Mandela, um because when i saw um i'm trying to remember his, yeah uh when i saw him i thought to myself what was true goy yet right but obviously now it all makes sense right yeah it does it does so, but i the, i enjoyed it but like you but like you said it didn't make sense because he wasn't there yeah so there's a lot of pieces missing and now you understand like I, we all understand why you know dave was missing and and Paz was by himself we understand that part that's exp that's explainable because i mean we we just lost homie the other parts i mean again it's it's by choice like how do you craft this together and please everyone and realistically you got to peel that out of your frame of mind to you know please everybody because yeah. you got to realize that you never are going to so you just got to live with your choices yeah yeah now you know? I, I don't know if you guys have talked about this part on your show but i'm gonna go ahead and say it I truly believe that Cypress should have been on that show. You know, I would not argue against that. And if not Cypress, then Fat Joe. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least. Yeah. One of us. Something yeah. to that effect, you know. But, you know, the representation was what it was. And But, you know, a lot of people asked me why we weren't a part of it. And I'm like, hey, listen, we've been like. And, and I explained it on our show, this thing, because I was getting hit with DMs and, right. you know, tagged on certain things. And I'm like, look, here it is. Cypress Hill, since day one, we've gotten snubbed from the industry and even from some peers just because of what we talked about with the cannabis. And, you know, first it was where the cannabis group outspoken and all this other stuff and they're taboo, don't touch them. And then that's all we are is cannabis. So like, you know, they don't even respect the fact that we do music and yes. cannabis is a small part of it. Yeah. But they, you know, it's, as it's been blown out for so long, we are the weed guys, mm -hmm. you know, so there's that. And, you know, we've learned to live with that because for us, it's the accolades don't matter for us. For us, it's more about what, what what our fans think and what they feel about us because in the end if we're selling the tickets to the shows and people are now doing the streams and all that stuff and we're effectively getting a lot of streams or sales however it goes then we're good you know right, right. The, we never needed a grammy we got nominated for three of them and the first one they asked us to perform and 
we didn't perform. We were like, no, we, we, we pass on that. Mm. And it ends up going to Diggable Planets. They performed. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So it went like that, and we knew, okay, that was that was the indication that we probably were going to win that if we had said yes to the performance. Oh. But we didn't. So then the very next year, we didn't win the next one, which was for... um. What was it for? It was for We Ain't Going Out Like That, Best okay. Performance. We lost that. I can't remember who we lost that to. And then the third one was uh, Throw Your Set in Air, and we lost that one. And I think that's at the point we just stopped going. It was like, you know, we keep getting snubbed for every <laughs> one of them, so why not just not even go? Right, right. You know, we get it. Like, if we're nominated, all right visible right but like you at that point we we realized what was going on so when we've been dealing with stuff like that and us as cypress hill being the underdogs all the time because of what we stand for champion championing cannabis and all this other right and you know being a west coast group that came from the east coast to start right um you know, we had all these things going against us. So we already realized that, you know what, we're going to have this. We don't give a fuck about what they think attitude. We don't care if you're rolling with us. I mean, with, you know, if you don't, if you don't fuck with us, that's cool. The people that are rolling with us, they're rolling with us. And that's all that counts. So again, so when these lists come out and we ain't on them, like we don't take it personal, I guess. personal because yeah. it's been happening since day one, since 1991. <laughs> you okay. know what I mean? Okay. Uh, let, let, let me ask you this: the, the Super Bowl, uh, KC, Philadelphia. Who, who did you pick? Did you have a prediction before? He, uh, Someone asked me beforehand, and I said KC. Okay. And I don't really give you know give a shit about either team, right? Um, but I appreciated that game. That was a really good game. But I said KC because I thought you know what, Mahomes got something to prove. He's got the championship experience already. And people are questioning. Nobody picked them. Everybody yeah. was shitting on them. True. And, and uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Mahomes. And everybody was like, Philly, 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 Philly. And all the yeah. all the people that do the the ESPN and the sports analysts, sports analysts, they're all like Philly. They were like everybody, but that's why old boy got emotional. It was not man one of y'all. Yes. Believed in us. That's right. I was like, Nan, one of y'all. That's yeah, right. Bro. He's right. <laughs> Nan, one of them <laughs> believed. True. And what the hell? Yeah, and that, look, he proved them all wrong. He yeah. wants to be the next Brady, but he got some rings to go, though. Yes, yes. You need Very about, true. like, what? <laughs> Five now, more? I have to ask you your honest opinion. The halftime show. <sighs> well, you know, it was what it was, right? <laughs> I think visually it was it was some creative shit but being being that she was pregnant she couldn't put like 100% of what she would have put into right. it you know in her movement in in doing these songs right um so you got to factor that in was it the best halftime show no I don't know I think maybe last year's was better yeah big time you know what I mean Big time. Um, she did. She did it. She did a pretty good job for being pregnant up there. I mean, I got to give her that. Like, and you know, her her set list was pretty good too because those those were all her smashers. Um, again, was it the best one? Nah, by far not the best. The, t top three, if you can re recall, top three Super Bowl perform halftime performances. Mm. If you can recall, Prince's was good. Hell yeah, that was that was one. That's that was my really favorite. Good. That was good. Um, I like the, the the one with Dre and Snoop and Mary and Hell yeah, Fifty hanging upside down. That was crazy. Hell yeah, I did not expect that. Right. Um, the third one. Who was the third one? <sighs> That's tough. I you know I don't know. Do you remember uh, uh, Michael Jackson? Yeah, one right here. I believe it was right here at the Rose Bowl. Yeah, Cowboys and Buffalo. Yeah, that was a good one. That too. That was a real, real yeah. good one. I mean, that's a good, that's a strong three right there. So those three are my top. Yeah, yeah. So, so my three. I'll piggyback on that, Michael one. Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you know what you were telling me a story. You know, because I'm gonna open up about a bottle of mezcal because I know you like drinking mezcal over tequila. Right. Now I want to make an announcement and, and I have a disclaimer. I haven't drank. The last time I drank was New Year's Eve, 
And I told everybody, take care of your bodies. Don't drink for at least for three months. Right. Let's go on a three-month stretch. So now, if I take a little sip of not beer, but of some mezcal, please forgive me because I may do this. Look. It's a special oh, event. So on the Green Thumb Show, you know the 30-minute challenge when we don't like, uh, when we're not supposed to curse the 30 minutes. And if we curse, we take a shot or the flips from the stunning. We act like when it's absolutely necessary to use an expletive within the context of a story, we say, can I get a reprieve? <laughs> and if the story is good enough, we give that reprieve and we yeah. don't got to take the shot. I think you get a reprieve <laughs> for okay. the day That'll work. on the shot. I, I've been, I've been good. So and I encourage you. I'm just not drinking no beer. So I may just take a shot, but yeah, let me yeah. open, open this. You had a story that I want that you were sharing off off air and I thought it was pretty hilarious and I think I don't know if you've ever shared this before but I want fans to know a little bit of your background when you had to go get a job at the Compton Indoor the Compton Swap Meet all right so like when you're a young man in Southern California and you know you're you know still living with moms and she starts pressing you like what are you going to do for work you need yeah. to go get a jobby job and, uh, I was, well, you know, my mother wasn't someone you could say no to. Right. You know, she was not having that sort of thing. My father neither, but, like, you know, my right. mother even less. And uh, so I said, all right, cool. And somehow I landed a gig through through a homie I went to. Um, I went to, a, what was I going through? A continuation school. Okay. <laughs> With the, he had a gig at the, the comp to swap me. Bumped in if you're nasty. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so somehow he got me like a job in the booth he worked in, working for these these Korean folks that sold like, you know, clothes, like clothes, yeah. sweatshirts and, and uh, jeans and shit like this, right? So I was there and I was like, still banging it this time we're right. doing cypress demos and trying to like get our music together we're still trying to figure out you know what the sound is and and you know writing songs it's it's early just early stages right <laughs> so i'm i'm in there and um you know as i said uh you know i was a banger you know I, right as as you could see the side i might have been banging with right here right <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> I'm there and some fools recognize me that that you know we're some rivals. Right. And they said, Oh, oh, you're over here. Okay, we're gonna come see you. And I'm like, I'm right here right now. What you wanna do? And and right. I could see them circling around. But I had homies within the swap meet yeah. because you know it's a with it's a tight community. And if you make friends there, they'll all ride up for you. So like yeah. you know, a few people came out, sort of intimidated them to get the fuck out. And uh, so they're, oh, okay, we're going to catch up with you. I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm right here, right, whenever. Right. You know what I'm saying? And this one day, uh, Sand Dog and Muggs and Mellow say, hey, there's this thing we got to go do. It's like a showcase or, or it's we're going to audition for a showcase. You need to come with us. I'm okay. like, all right, cool. So I call my homie to copy the gig. I'm like, hey, my dude, I gotta go do this thing with the group. With hey, this is one of our, it's like it might be a big chance for us. Right. It didn't end up being shit, but I mean, you know, we thought it was gonna take us somewhere, right? So I take the day off, and he goes up, and those dudes show up. Oh shit! And they roll his ass up, really, because he's in the booth that I'm in. And they think he's my homie, and they don't know he's one of them too. But like the fact that he's working where I'm working, he thinks he's on my side of the street. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they roll his ass up. <laughs> and I, I get a call from him. Hey man, what the fuck is going on over here, man? I just got my ass whooped because of you, man. It was like, hey, I roll. I told him I'm one of y'all, and they still whoop my ass. I'm like. <laughs> fuck you gonna do about it i said oh man i'm sorry you had to take that l i guess i ain't coming to work right right <laughs> right this, fuck that shit. Oh, shit. oh man that was yeah that was i still went i went back i was there for a while and and uh, i see some crazy shit but those dudes never came back because one day 
their OG who knew me from something else, right? He knew me from like way back. He saw I was working there and he was like, oh, you right here. Okay. I'm going to tell my homies not to come fuck with you though because I'm cool with you. Oh, okay. They not cool with you, but I'm cool with you. So they're going to leave you alone after this. And I was like, all right, cool. And, uh, you know, I always respected that dude because yeah. he didn't have to do that. He could have let the wolves keep coming yes, at me. Yes, yes. And I would have had to been forced to do something. But I knew, like, at some point, like, he's going to get locked up. Right, right. Or something might happen to him because of the lifestyle we were living at this point, right? right? right. When he's gone, there ain't nothing to hold them little wolves back. So, yes. I, you know, I Very was true. Like, out of there. You know, I, I want to say something uh, for people that don't live in California that uh, I don't know if people still throw up gang signs today, like the blood, like the, the, the B and the C. Yeah. In the 80s, my brother did some bullshit. He's sitting in front of my house or on the porch, and he sees these bloods roll by from Scottsdale right here in Carson. Yeah, yeah. And he sees them, and they throw up the B. And he's fucking around. He went like this. Oh, man. Okay. Don't fuck around with gang signs over no, here. Okay. You cannot. So he did that. And they stopped. And he walks inside the house. And he's, <laughs> he's, he, goes, he goes like this. Tony, somebody wants you outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? So I opened the door. He looked. And that guy goes, we'll be back. And I'm like, he'll be back. Like, who in the fuck is that? <laughs> okay. So my next door neighbor, about 10 minutes, comes back. Tony and I was like, "See, si? they hablan afuera. They they want you outside." And I was like, "Who?" And I looked, about twenty fucking dudes are right there, oh, all man. in fucking red. Yeah. I was like, "What the fuck?" Mm. The good thing was that one of my Mexican homies was with them, and he goes, "Nah, bro, he ain't a fucking crib." <laughs> yeah. You know, but I could have got fucked up, and my brother in the room laughing. Oh man, dumbass. Oh man. So. That, yeah, I know. I know how that goes. Did you ever see anybody get tossed up at the Compton Indoor? Oh, yes. There was this one time, this one dude, he came in looking fresh, Tony. He had one of them. You remember when um, Fila was use, uh, making those those long sleeve knit like sweaters, right? Yeah, right, right. Nice. They had, they had them in white and they had either red and blue or a, or a light powder blue. Well, this dude came in wearing the white and powder blue uh fila top right okay and it was nice he had his jerry curl whipped up chains he had powder blue corduroys and some white k swiss oh shit right fresh as fuck <laughs> right what happened at the end was this <laughs> Homie came in there trying to shoplift. His money, you know, he had all the gold chains looking like money, but he came up in there and tried to shoplift. And see, those security guards up there, they wait. <laughs> they they thirst for action like this, man, so yeah. they could roll somebody's ass up. And uh homeboy gave him all the all the business salute, salute. and <laughs> Hellboy tried to run out while three or four of the securities were on him. And these these dudes, they were in shape. You weren't going to get away. Right, right, right. And they rolled his ass up in the parking lot. They drug him through the parking lot after they caught him by his fresh-ass fila sweater. <laughs> and all that, like, came in with, the, like, he had been drugged through an oil slick in the parking lot. Wow. You know what I mean? He came in unfresh. And, and we're like, oh, man, he ain't never coming here to steal again. <laughs> By the way, I, I just took like half of this, and it burned my damn throat right now. Burned the belly. Yeah. That's that mezcal, man. Yeah, I, have, I haven't, and I encouraged everybody, you know, but today I, I, today I, I did, so I'm hey, not going to lie. Hey, I got to say, man, I, I co-sign that shit all day. You got to take care of yourself. You got to work out or, you know, keep active in some sort of way yeah. and watch what you put into yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Word up. It, it, it makes all the difference. And you know what? I saw that today on your podcast when I guess you guys went away from the podcast. You guys showed a little footage that you guys, it was Bobo talking about. Uh, he, he was somewhere. And then it went to you where you were saying, motherfuckers think that we're just some lazy motherfuckers. All we do is smoke weed all fucking day. Yeah. And you were talk, talking about taking care of yourself. Yeah. I thought that was because I preached that a lot here. Fitness. You know. Fitness. Hey, me and my son, okay, we'll go out to a show. We'll go out to the mall. We'll go out somewhere. And not to dog anybody, but we ask ourselves, like, mijo, look around and see how many men we see fit. Right. 
and it's very, very rare because we live in probably what the, the most obese country in the world. Yeah. You know, we love carne asada fries. It's horrible. <laughs> we don't we don't watch what we're putting in. Like a lot of us will eat past where we're you know, where yes. we're where we're full. Because it tastes so fucking good. Of course. Especially if you're stoners, you know, it's hard to have that fucking <laughs> willpower, you know what I mean? But yes. like there was a time um that I wasn't really on it. I was still in the gym, but I was eating bad and I was eating late and I was drinking on top of that. And I fucking swolled up to like 246 pounds, right? And that was the heaviest I had ever been. And I would notice it every night after, you know, a show. My back's on fire on my right side. My heels are on fire. My knees feeling fucked up. Wow. And it was because I was carrying too much weight, right? right. And, and, and I thought that the work I was putting in the gym was sufficient but like i wasn't like fueling my body properly yes Uh, my metabolism was slow as fuck because i was only eating once or twice a day and late and then on top of all the alcohol i was consuming the sugar through that man like my shit was like slowed the fuck down right Mm -hmm. and i finally decided to do something about it and I, I started training with my homeboys, uh, um, his girl at the time, because she was a professional trainer. But she trained me with like this this older dude who was like, um, I was in my late thirties at the time, and he was like fifty two. Oh wow! And he was outworking me at every fucking thing. I was like, oh hell no! I, I, yeah. I thought I was gonna outwork him. He outworked me at everything, and then at the end, she wanted us to run a mile, and she was timing us. And I was like, I'm for sure going to smoke this old man, right? (laughs) Hell no. He stood with me for a block just to, like, you know, be cool with me. And then he left me. I was like, like, what the fuck? And he, like, yeah, he, he, he. He embarrassed yeah. the fuck out of me. Yes. After that, I was like, oh, hell no, that's not going to keep happening. So <laughs> I, I started putting my work in, and I wasn't dropping weight right away, but I was getting fit. Yes. Like, I felt myself strong, core strong, like I, everything, endurance. Yeah. And then she asked me, what's your weight like? I'm like, well, let me get on a scale. So I got on a scale, and she told me to call her after I got on the scale. And I was like, well, like, I feel stronger and my endurance is there, but like my weight is still the same. Yeah. She's like, so have you done the diet that I gave you? And I was always reluctant because I was like, that diet ain't going to work on me. Fuck right, no, right. right. That's it's There's no way it's too much food. I, I'm thinking because I'm used to one fucking meal late night. Yes. I'm thinking that's t- how am I going to lose weight eating three times a day? So she says, do the fucking diet. And then come talk to me about your fucking weight. And I was like, oh, okay. So I I effectively, you know, and put it into my head. Okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to give it a shot for real. And I did that. And then I started fucking dropping and I started noticing it significantly. And from there, you know, I, I went up and down, but I learned how to maintain like where i'm at right now because like you know carrying that shit around you know on a tour three four four nights a week that you do shows in a row at a from an hour to uh 90 minutes of a show that gets hard especially i'm 52 now send dogs like 56 we work out to be able to do this shit yes like athletes work Absolutely. out to do their their business we do the same thing so that we can get out there and do it on the level we do it so that shit you're saying you know is everything you yes. know i co-sign that shit all day oh yeah you know i want to i want to switch it up here a little bit and i want to talk about hip-hop i love talking hip-hop with you but i want to talk about the four elements and go through them with you so uh in no specific order there's graffiti there's djing there's uh there's b-boying and there, there's MCing. right okay I want to talk about breaking a little bit. Right. Were you ever a breaker? I tried, but I wasn't that good. Okay. I wasn't that good at that. For some reason, I could not, like, I could not get that part of it down. There was a disconnect in in my physical abilities there. I didn't know my strength, uh-huh. and it takes some strength to, to do any of that floor shit. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, at that point, I wasn't connected with it. 
you know, I got connected to it later through martial arts, but like through the break dancing, I could not. Did you ever, uh, could you ever bust windmills? I got close. Okay. okay. <laughs> I got close, but not close enough. So where, where I would, what, what I excelled at in that aspect of it was the popping. I was, oh. I was good at that. Like, oh, shit. yeah, that, that, that's where I excelled at. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you if you can remember who was possibly, I don't even know if they're probably still alive or if you can remember their names. Can you remember anybody that you know it was fucking dope at popping and dope at breaking back then? Both at, like, like the, the, two uh, separate guys or one guy guys, or, or one guy good at both? No, the two separate guys. Like, I'll okay. give you an example. So, okay. So, in, in terms of the popping, there was a couple guys. Okay. Right? There was Mr. Animation. Right. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. There was Tiny. Um, there was obviously, you know, Papa Taco, rest in peace. Rest in peace, yes. Shrimp. Yes. And uh, there was another dude, though. His name was Junebug. And he was from this crew called uh, Electric Boogie Masters, e EBM. No shit. And he was a bad motherfucker that a lot of people didn't know about because, like, he got lost in the shuffle, drugs, and all this other oh, shit. Okay, but okay. he was a bad motherfucker when it came to the popping. In terms of the breaking... Fuck, that's hard because there was there was a lot of good motherfuckers we came across. But the guy that we came across that was most gifted at the time, right before it starts turning into some, you know, revolutionary shit that we're seeing right. now, was this dude out of Linwood, right? And Julio G could speak to him too. You could you could right. you could ask him about this. His name was Little Man Jam. Oh, okay. His combinations were fucking sick. And whenever he did his windmills, they were like two little bats, like straight the fuck out like this. He had like the straightest windmills. He, he, like the guy that I could closest relate him to in terms of strength and power and the way he whipped his fucking legs is this guy named B-Boy Pocket. He's a little Korean dude. The Korean guy. South Korean guy. His legs are, they look like, wood, like pieces of wood. Right. So Little Man Jam shit. Way back in that time, like in 89, 88, 87, he was doing like shit that crazy. Right, right. And we had, like, we, we seen a lot of guys do floor work and, and do some incredible shit. But like his combinations and how clean his fucking leg work was and and how straight his legs were on the windmills yeah like his whole crew was dope but he was just he out stand out like if like he had an accident uh, uh unfortunately where you know he had a crew of homies and he they were always riding the bikes and and, and shit like this and i guess he had an accident where he fucking slid in some glass and it, it and it fucked up some of his tendons, so he wasn't able to do some of the stuff that he was capable of doing once upon a time. But I would imagine had that dude kept doing the shit, like because right. there's there's dudes that are like in their forties and fifties somehow still yes. doing this shit. Yes. yes, I would imagine you know if that dude had kept his shape and that not happened to him, he'd be one of the baddest motherfuckers anybody's yeah. seen. The baddest guy that I ever seen was at Radio Tron. I went to Radio Swan Radio. Tron twice, uh, the guy named Oracle. Oh yeah, and that I guy was fucking him. amazing. Yeah. Did, did you ever uh, visit Radio Tron? Yes. Really? Yeah. One time, I choked on the mic so bad it was horrible. You did? Oh man, I was like sixteen. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what I was even doing there. But Julio G and Tony G, those uh, those were our. You know, to Julio was our peer because he. You know, he came from the same place we knew Julio. Yeah. We knew Tony through Julio. And Tony was always looking out for us. And he let us come up in, send dog, Mello, and myself. And I don't know if T-Funk was with us. He might have been locked up by at that time, T-Funk from Funk Dubious. Yes. Because he was a part of our interior crew, you know, before we all come up, right? right. So we go to the Radiotron and Tony G's DJing this night, him and Julio. And because, you know, they're, they're, he's our older homie and he's looking out for us, he lets us get on the mic. Send Dog does his thing and he kicks it. Mello does his thing, he kicks it. And then I froze the fuck up. I, like, I forgot the first word. It was gone. And they're like, next. Next? <laughs> next. Oh, shit. It's the Radiotron. Yeah, it's the Radiotron. got no time for a choke. You know yes. what I'm saying? And that was the first... 
Well, no, that was the second time and the last time I ever choked at at any of the shit. Like I got too nervous and I How got, did you sleep that night, man? I didn't I got too in my head, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I was I kept thinking of the rhyme instead of just like I already knew the rhyme, but I was thinking about it too much. Right? Like I gotta be perfect. It's the radio tron. I put a lot of pressure on myself. I still do that to this day, but I know my shit now. So like yeah. Yeah. You know, I could harness it, but at that point, I was like, it, it was too much chaos in my head. And right when my part starts, boom, I forget the first word, done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and that's what happened to me. And I was like, oh, man, it was the worst shit ever because it's the Radiotron, that legendary. The, yes, that was the first time I actually um, saw uh, 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 Tony G spin, and he played the show yeah. from uh, uh, Dougie Fresh and... Um, yeah. And uh, what, what, what was the name, Lottie Dottie guy? Uh, Slick, Slick Rick, Rick and Dougie Slick Fresh, Rick, yeah. Yes. So now let's move on to graffiti. Were you ever into graffiti? You know, yeah, I appreciate it, appreciated it for sure. Um, as far as doing it, I never felt confident in the hand uh -huh. to like take a spray can and, and knock it down. Like I used to do shit on paper. Mugs was really good Okay. at, at, uh, at the graph stuff. And, and Send Dog, if he had applied himself... Cause he's good at he was good at drawing. Oh, okay. I think if he had gone in that direction, he he probably would have done some good work. Me, I was okay. Okay. I appreciated it more than anything. Yeah. yeah. I would have been better at that though than the break dancing for sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now let's get into DJing. I see you be spinning. Oh, yeah. I see you spinning. Yes, hey, look, sir. If you guys never seen this guy, spin, when I say spin, DJing or cutting, I don't know what they call. To me, it was spinning. Yeah. You know, go to his Twitch, follow him. Be believe me, you'll you'll see him go going back and forth with needleless turntables. Yes, with those reins. Yes. Those now, reins. were you that good back then? Um, I was always a work in progress, like any DJ at that point. But I wasn't like in it like you guys were. Like I, you know, like you guys had put hours into yes. that shit. Where for me, I would always have to sneak them in because I'm an MC. You know, right. That like they expect me to be writing songs and like you know getting on the mic so i would just sneak turntable time in on mugs's tables uh -huh. and and then he saw me one day and he was like oh, okay let me correct you just to see this kick that's where you start the snare ta, 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 ta. that's the other part like so learn coming in on those right and so right. those were the first things he taught me and so i would practice every anytime he went to new york or he was going out of town and he asked me to watch his apartment, whether it was the one on Cannon where we were doing our demos on a four track mm, okay. or on Kingsley where all the rhyme syndicate be. And yeah. we were like in the mix with all those dudes. Right. Either way, I'd get on his turntables and I'd, I'd practice a little bit. I didn't put in the hours like a, a normal DJ and stuff like that, but I had started on needle and wax like from the, from the old day and learning those cuts and the mixing I, I learned later, you know, right, after, right. you know, just getting into it throughout the years and stuff like that. And again, and I, and I probably told you last time it was uh, Julio G one day we were uh, doing a sound check uh -huh. and he saw me, you know, doing the chases and all that stuff, bringing it back. And he was like, Oh, okay. You know how to do that. Okay. Here, let me show you this. And he gave me some shit to practice. He, I, he probably didn't think I was going to. And I did, you know, because I, yeah, I was all, always enthusiastic about DJing. Like, you know, I always wanted to do it. Like, Skate Master Tate, rest in peace. Him and Muggs used to DJ this spot called King King on La Brea and Sixth. Okay. Right? And they would spin whatever they wanted, whether it was soul or hip hop or whatever the fuck or a combination of both. And whenever they would go out of town... They'd hit me. I didn't like, I was like, get the fuck out of here. They're asking me to do this shit. So, like, that was when I got bit by the bug because I, you know, I may not have been able to mix like I can mix now, but I knew songs. Yeah. So I'd fucking get the party cracking. And, and, uh, you know, so people started seeing that shit, but like, I really never got out there for it. You know uh, what I mean? Like, okay. Okay. And, and I got into it deeper much later. Right, right, right. And okay. My, yeah, I got into it deeper much later and, and started really practicing, putting hours in with the other DJs at Be Real TV that have yeah. 
that have been there and stuff like that. And then learning from mix master Mike when he was DJing with us. Yeah. Learning from Lord as he's DJing with us now. But the whole shit that started me off was all the, all the stuff that Julio gave me to get better. Like practicing on practicing at a faster speed, like putting Uh on it's time Hashim and, and doubling up the speed yeah, and rocking it like that. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. You know, yeah. like as fast as you can, because then everything else slows down. Yeah, yeah. I almost cut somebody out right now. I so. know you did. So <laughs> I do it too. So, yeah. So Aton is our victim all the time. Really? Salute, Aton. <laughs> You're our okay. victim every time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, okay. I'm gonna switch it up because MC and we know you MC. We know you. Could, we know you can fucking spit. We know you got fucking classics. As a matter of fact, today I was bumping a uh, fucking, um, to me, the first, and I told you this the first time you were here, the first album is the fucking classic for me. That's the one I had you sign last time you yes, were sir. here. To me, um, dun, 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 Stone just the way of the world. Yeah. Fuck, man, those songs give me fucking goosebumps on me. Thank you, sir. You know, because I seen those shit live. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah. And let me tell you something, and I'm going to repeat it so my story doesn't change. Look. Lies always change, truth never changes. So I'm going to say it again. The people that changed my life when I saw them perform, and this is kind of in order. I saw KRS1 at the Palace on yes, sir. Hollywood and Vine, and he, he wasn't even supposed to rap that day. As a matter of fact, uh, De La Soul was there, and uh, um, KRS1 was there. They called him up on stage. That's right. His DJ was trying to find an instrumental. Yeah. So he just had a guy beatbox, and he started off with, The B is free, yeah. the crack calls money. The fucking crowd went insane. Mm. Okay. Gave me goosebumps just watching him. Then I got to see one of the few that got to see uh, NWA at the Anaheim Celebrity Theater. And I still remember the date, March 24, 1988. They had a dope show. Yes. Dope show. I got to see uh, Mix Matt Spade on, on the rest in peace on the stage with King T. DJ Poo was on the drum. And DJ Ladder was on the turntables. Another bad motherfucker. Yes. And Ice-T was headlining the Power album. That's right. I got to see the DOC perform. He hmm. was so drunk, he walked off the wrong side of the stage. Yeah. Okay. So it was so um, Boogie Down Productions, K- KRS One, then uh, NWA, and then I'm gonna say Cypress Hill. Okay, hands down Cypress Hill, and I'm gonna tell you who, who else. A lot of people get shocked on this. Ghetto Boys. Ghetto Boys. They yeah, had just dropped that. I think can't be stopped. Yeah, that album where my mind's playing tricks on me. Fuck, they were fucking yeah. amazing. Bro. They had a great show. Yeah. So so now be. Since we're talking about the elements of hip hop, when I look at that, all I saw with you guys, I'm just going to talk about you guys. I'll, I'll talk about Dre because I saw Dre on the turntables when he was with NWA. Microphones and a DJ and killing the motherfucking place. Okay. Right. Is it wrong for me to look for that, what I saw back then in today's artists? Because I don't see it. You don't. You don't see it. They, they, it's a lost art. Yeah. You know, and some of us keep it alive because, you know, we know that this is one of the most important pieces and it's one of the most entertaining if you if you do the shit right. Right. So we never forget about that. I mean, like, you know, from Muggs himself, I mean, he don't he don't tour with us anymore because he does more studio work and, and right. a lot of collaborations and he's constantly busy. But, I mean, that dude is one of the baddest DJs on the planet as mm. well. I mean, people really didn't realize that he was a DMC battle champion and he had all the tricks with wax before the Serato shit. So like everything he knew before is so much easier because now um, the technology makes all the, all this stuff easier. So, you know, from him to, you know, going in with Julio G another master, you know, these dudes like how, you know, like he made our show sharp and like with his style of of rock and it was all precise and precision clean shit but dope right then going into mike which was going into another fucking universe right right like the way he looked at it like he's a fucking alien i mean he this is his (laughs) mentality right and he does something that no one else does on the fucking planet maybe cubert but in terms of show rocking he's got just a completely you know a, a trippy style it's dope it snaps in and lord the killer you know what i mean um he's got a different pocket for what we do and it and it slaps in like 
perfectly, right? And our whole thing, and the whole thing to say about that is we always had, as Cypress Hill, the dopest fucking DJs. And we were like, this is a crime if we're not allowing people to see what these dudes are capable of. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? And highlighting that and showing, hey, this is an art, a part of hip-hop, a part of hip-hop music. And, you know, like, we go out of our way to highlight this shit because it's really, you know, yeah, you cannot have hip-hop without the DJ. Absolutely. And you see a lot of these fucking shows happen and the dudes are just rapping there and they don't got a DJ. It's somebody in the back pressing the fucking button for the next song and it's like, come on, man. <laughs> And they're not, uh, and, and a lot of these MCs rap over, the, rap over the lyrics. Rapping over the track. That was a no-no for us. Yeah. So a lot of us are used to like, nah, we don't do that. That's lazy and, and it doesn't sound good, especially, you know, if you're really trying to go for it. Right. Sometimes the track is too dead for you. You should stay within the tone of the track. But there's a certain liveness that you give it that, like, obviously you can't if the track is there because it's leading you. And most of the time, I would imagine tone is that uh, a lot of these dudes don't get a lot of shows, so they don't know their songs as well as they should. And right. maybe they don't think to make instrumentals because they don't think they're going to do shows or whatever. Right, right. Where in our school, we had to be prepared with all that. The acapellas had to go out. The instrumentals had to go out. Yes. And when you did the show, you had to do it on, you know, the only thing you could have in there is TV track, which is the chorus, obviously, yes. you know, to to have a little bit of layers. But the rest is you. It's you. And, and uh, these cats don't have that part of the game because, you know, there's no, again, I always say this, there's no training for what we do. Yeah. And it always evolves into whoever is, like, running the game at the time. And if they're not taking the time to educate none of these cats on how this is done, they're just going to freelance it. And then you see these cats and some of them homies, and, and it's, it's, it's hard to say, but, you know, when they do their performances, they're doing most of their hype parts Rather than they're letting their verses go and just sort of hyping the song as opposed to doing the verses. Right, right. And that's hard to see when you think about how much work motherfuckers before that put into like, hey, man, I'm wearing my verses like a fucking jacket. Yes. With yes. pride. Like, this, look at my fucking fresh ass coat. You know, that's how we used to think about it, right? Like, we right. live by that, and, and motherfuckers just don't care these days. And no, that's cool. Don't. Yeah, That's cool. You know, if this is what it is right now, that, that you, you got to let them live it out. Uh, absolutely. Now, if I had to twist your arm, your rap, Mount Rushmore. You got to give me four guys. Four guys. Oh, damn. Well, hold on. We haven't gotten to that yet. So. All right. People, people are always. You want ready. another one? Sure. People are going to always shit on choices. So, you know, I'm going to make mine and you have to <laughs> embrace, <laughs> embrace the choices that I make, even though you might not agree with them. Because that's the thing about lists. Yes. Right. Okay. So for me, KRS-One has always been. Yes. The, n the number one um, as MCs go to me. Eminem also falls in this category because he's the most versatile motherfucker to ever write a verse, flip a script, get on the mic, eat a motherfucker up, and more importantly, write anthems. Um, so, you know, he's number two, Jay-Z. Mm, okay. Also, he don't get enough credit. <clears throat> I mean, he does, but he doesn't, right? He gets enough, he gets a lot of credit because people like, no, all right, he's every summer he was slamming shit, but the business thing sort sort of sometimes tends to over highlight what he actually is as an artist, as an MC. He's one of the dopest motherfuckers to ever slap that shit around. Um, Rock him. Um, if Rock him doesn't exist, a lot of styles don't exist. You wow, know, a lot of people built styles from Rock him. Wow. And that's that's reality because his his type of shit changed the game. Him and KRS One changed. Those are, the those game. are two of mine, right? What what is that? Three or four? Mm. That's four. That's four. And 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 I gotta say, just out of out of respect, 
out of respect and the fact that they were the pioneers that really changed the game and revolutionized shit. And if it wasn't for them, none of us get in. Run DMC. Run DMC. Run DMC. Hell yeah. Okay, for me, I only got three. <clears throat> I guess I never thought about the fourth one. Obviously, not in no specific order. KRS, Rockham, and Chuck D. Chuck D. Yeah, Chuck D. Fuck, Chuck D. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Like, so this is what happens, right? Um, for guys like Chuck and and myself, those of us in groups, we don't get looked at like solo MCs do. They never put us in these these groups. With Chuck just got mentioned by Billboard. Um, in one of these lists, finally. Wow. You know what I mean? But usually they leave these lists to, you know, solo, solo artists, solo rappers. They don't ever include motherfuckers from a group. Right, right. Um, Q-Tip might make the list here and there, but it's, uh-huh. it's, it's weird how that happens. Um, but yeah, Chuck is, yeah, one of the most revolutionary motherfuckers. Like his style was second to none and... It was the most different. I mean, he was one of the most influential to us. Him and KRS One, wow. those two were the most influential guys to us. One in terms of the way, well, the way they both flipped. Yeah, it was completely different than any other MCs in in their time. You know, um, and then w- with Public Enemy, it was everything. Just all the colors that popped off from their music was just different hell yeah hell yeah love love me some fucking public enemy exactly they're they're my all-time favorites as if you ask me who's the 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 the, the greatest group in hip-hop that's the them and run dmc top okay. two okay now i'm gonna ask you one before we go to fan questions okay <clears throat> i'm gonna ask you something you know when there are people like if you say basketball who is the greatest to have ever done it? People will say either Kobe or Michael Jordan. It's Kareem. Okay. Okay, Kareem. Okay. So, but now, and then people will say boxing. Who was the best? Some people will probably say either Mike Tyson or the, or Muhammad Ali. Right. People would. So now. Right. Is there the best who ever have done it in rap? Everybody's going to have an opinion on who that is. Um, that's hard to say. It is. It is because it, there's so many motherfuckers that are so dope and, and guys that are doper than the dopest motherfucker you ever heard of that you've never heard of. Yeah. Right? The guys that are so talented that, like, they'd scar the MC that you thought was the greatest in the world. Yeah. So it's it's kind of hard to say. Um, we all, as MCs, have to believe that we are. Yes, yes, yes. Like, I believe that I am, anytime I'm re- writing something, anytime I'm going out and in, in, in doing a show and, like, doing the MC work on, on stage or it's in the studio, I got to believe that I'm that to do what I do because it's so competitive. And yes. it's all, and, you know, hip-hop was birthed off of competition. Yes. So, like, I always stay in that mind state. So, like, look, I know I'm not the best DJ out there because there's DJs been doing this long before right. me. Yes. But as it goes, as MCs getting on the turntables, like, I, that's the competition. I Like, I look at all the other MCs, I'm like, I will murk any one of these <laughs> motherfuckers trying to come like on the turntables against me if their MCs like doing the fucking turntable work. Right. right. Unless they're the guys that were doing the turntable work first. That you know, that's different. Right, right, right. But you know, that like I pride myself on the competition of it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, now we're gonna we're gonna move on. So so okay, but let me just wrap up that question. Everybody will have a differences of opinion. Was there the greatest I've ever done it? But I think in all fairness, you kind of gave your answer because you gave us four, which yeah. was your, okay. Yeah. Okay, this guy, see, um, hopefully I can read it. From the crew at High Potency, what OG strain would you like to see come back? Um, what OG strain would I like to see come back? I mean, if you're talking about OG Kush, then the OG Kush, just original. I mean, we, like... Pedro and I smoked some earlier today that our homie gave us. There's like a few growers that grow it 
where it smells and tastes like that old shit from way back. Okay. But if you're talking about just like OG strains, like original strains that like are like, you know, fire and it's not it's not necessarily an indication of like they're asking for OG Kush. Um and that's hard to say. A lot of people say Kush Bubba, like bring that back. Okay. Because it, it was kind of different. It's not as strong and as potent as, as OG Kush, but the Kush Bubba was was always pretty fire. So that's and people still grow that. It's just not, they don't grow it a lot. And, oh, okay. But, okay. you know, the other one is Thai Bud. Thai Bud. Yeah, that's always the mythical, mysterious shit. No one's ever really had it. it yeah, bring the Thai Bud back. Let's see what the fuck it, that's like. Is that like the Thai stick? You know, that stuff tied to a stick. It's it's it, it's <laughs> kind of in reference to that, but it's, it's, it's really this bud that's like, it used to be like golden. Right. And it wasn't like necessarily brown. It wasn't Bobby Brown stra- uh, stress booth as we call it today. Yeah. It was just like more golden. It was, it was less green. It okay. wasn't tied to a stick. That was like the whole <laughs> Cheech and Chong <laughs> thing. People do that today, though. They do tie, tie it to a stick. Okay, okay. And then they pull the stick out and they smoke it. It's crazy. Okay, so th- this one is, ask him what's the heaviest rock band he's been on tour with. And what rock bands has he done collabs with? I mean, the heaviest we ever toured with was probably Rage Against the Machine when they were um, first coming up. But they were the heaviest we had been on tour with. Eventually, we get on tour with Limp Bizkit, and they were fucking heavy, too. They were really heavy. Uh, But at this point, we were taking the band ourselves, so we got heavy ourselves. Uh You know, We were like doing a combination, a hybrid show of doing partial um pieces of our set in real hip hop with the turntables and in percussion and then we'd bring on the band at a certain point and rock like four or five songs with the band then go back into the turntables and percussion and then like finish out with the band at the like very end and just like fucking hit them with like something heavy like rock superstar or something like that Hell or yeah. Or translate, we ain't going out into a metal version of we ain't going out. And yeah. people would like, we were rocking those Limp Biscuit fans. There was a lot of Cypress Hill fans there, but we were rocking the fuck out of those Limp Biscuit fans. And I don't think they expected that to happen. Yeah. You know, and we didn't expect it to happen. We knew we could make it happen, but, you know, it's, we know that when you tour with a band who's having a hell of a run, and and at the point in their career where they are peaking sometimes their fans only want to see them we we saw that happen in our shows where motherfuckers opening for us got the business like (laughs) they're you know fans are screaming cypress while they're doing their show and it's it's tough you know so like we know what that's like (laughs) and so we were expecting some shit like that but when we opened up and we fucking came with the hip-hop and they were exploding to that and then we came and plugged in and hit them with the fucking band shit they really went ape shit so yeah the two heaviest bands were pretty much limp biscuit and and rage against the machine and rage against the machine was the cause of us going heavy because we did a show we were doing a festival in spain in madrid and it was all metal we were the only hip-hop there and we had to play after rage and to us, we felt like, oh, my God, they blew us the fuck out. Cause, really? Well, because their sound was so big. Hip-hop, we got two tracks, and there's only so much you could turn that up, right, right, right. In, a, in the setting of a festival. So, like, their sound is much bigger. Now, in terms of reaction and what the critics and what fans said, we killed that shit. Yeah. But for us, we were like, damn, these motherfuckers blew us out with the sound. We got to come heavy yeah. you know so that was the start of us doing that shit but yeah those were the two heaviest man we've played with heavier bands but like as tour goes yeah it, it was them but we played with metallica that was crazy metallica opening up for metallica in a fucking um in a in a european metal fest we played main support to metallica you know there was all these legendary metal bands before us and then us, and then Metallica, and oh shit! We, I was like, "What the fuck are we doing here?" I mean, I knew what we were doing there, and I knew what the fuck 
I know what we do, but I was like, again, like it's Metallica. So you're like, what the fuck? Right, right, right. You know right. what I mean? And we okay. went out there and we did our thing and we fucking smashed them. But it was just awesome that they accepted us because, you know, fuck, here we are doing hip hop. We don't at that point. We didn't even have our band yet. This was just us doing hip hop and. We knew if we we plugged in with a band, they would fucking go ape shit. But, yeah, because they were going ape shit for the hip hop. So hell yeah, that was awesome. The other one is a uh, question for Be Real. What are your thoughts on Santa Fe Clan music? I think he's one of the dopest fucking rappers out there doing what he does. I mean, this motherfucker is is highly talented in different ways. Like he can rap, he can sing. His songs are dope. Motherfucker plays accordion while he's doing the no shit. shit. Oh man, I did. I did a collab with him uh, with Lupio Rivera. Salute yeah. to Lupio, uh, along with Aleman and Snoop Dogg, and that song blew the fuck up. We were like tripped. I like. You I know, saw the premiere. I was like tripping on how crazy that song got. Like yeah. the you know what it did. But my man, Santa Fe, you know, that was like, you know, my first time hearing him. So, like, after hearing him there, I thought he was dope. And so I started digging deeper into some of his shit. And I realized, man, this motherfucker's multifaceted. Like, he's very yeah. talented. And, yeah, he's he's one of the dopest out there. Okay. His, Aleman is dope, too, man. If you ain't up on Aleman, that motherfucker is a beast in Spanish. Some of these guys, man, it it, it took a minute for it to like sink in but like the way that some of these guys from mexico and in in the other places they're fucking spitting thunder yes, right now yes 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 okay yeah that inspires me hell yeah i gotta get my shit right yeah but, but his next question kind of goes along with it will he ever do a second spanish album you goddamn right well i don't know about <laughs> albums what what i'm gonna do is is and, I, and i've talked to send dog about this it's like yeah and I don't know if I mentioned it last time. Like, for me, I want to get away from, like, committing to an album worth okay. of music. I want to, like, focus on songs. Because, I mean, we've done 31 fucking years of albums. Yes. So I think we've given a lot in that aspect to do something different and focus in on every song, right? And so right. that's one of the things I want to do in terms of the Spanish shit. Like, go song by song instead of, like, saying, hey, we're going to give you an album. We're going to give you a ride. It's going to be different. And you might get an album's worth of music, but it's not going to come out like an album. And f so for me, it's, it's that song theory, song by song, you know, because it gives people a, a, a chance to focus on that song and really, like, you know, invest in it soak it in whether they love it or they fucking hate it and you know that's an indicator if they feel it you know okay boom this is the direction this is the fucking path if they don't you still got another one and if they feel that one that could be the path Hell yeah! so you leave it open um with the album you got to fucking invest in that whole time and thinking this got to be a cohesive piece and are they going to like it all? Because, you know, nowadays you put that shit up and people just take the song they like and the rest, they're like, fuck yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. This next question is, ask Be Real, how did that Yellow Wolf collab happen? DJ Muggs. Salute, okay. salute to my man, DJ Muggs. Uh, he hit me up and told me that Wolf wanted to work with me and... Uh, and and that he was doing it. And anything DJ Muggs does, I'm going to get on because, I mean, it's motherfucking dj mugs <laughs> that's my my older brother um and i fuck with yellow wolf i think he's very talented he's a dope mc he probably doesn't get enough credit for you know the the bars he spits yeah so yeah. you know i was like fuck it you know let's go and uh you know he it, it's cool when when the younger generation recognizes someone in our generation, because yes, yes. you know that 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 lets me know that my game is still sharp. Yes, that all the work I put into is still like they're hearing it. Yes. Some, some maybe not all of them, but some of them and the significant ones are fucking hearing it, and they're like, "Yo, I want to fuck with Be Real or Doctor Green Thumb or whatever." And I appreciate that shit. I never look at it. 
any of it like I'm above any of it is because yeah. I know what it's like to be the young artist and a motherfucker passing the torch or you know saying hey I get down with these guys right here you guys like Chuck and EPMD did that for me and 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 Cypress Hill and all that shit so I would do it for another in yes. a heartbeat yes. if I believe in what they're doing for absolutely real. Like, so when people ask for collabs, I, I'd be like, send me the beat first. You have to. <laughs> I need to hear the beat you before have I, I commit. <laughs> you know, you know, being, I'll be real with you, Dad. It's funny, I said, I'll be real with you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I sold beats, and when I tracked the guy, and he's out there talking about, you know, I walked out the house, and what did I see? A punk police staring. I'm, no, I'm giving you your money back. Yeah. I'll be real with you. Yeah, yeah no. I'll say that again. But, um, I, I just can't let it go, bro. My no. music means too much. Yeah. I mean, you can't have someone ABC rapping over your shit. And that's the realest shit. And it, like, as a producer, you don't yes. want that. Unless it somehow snaps in. Because sometimes the most simplistic shit on the right bed of music will crack. And we've witnessed it throughout the history of hip-hop. Yes, yes. Some guys have, like, gotten in with not having such complex verses and songs and stuff like that real simplistic easy shit that's dope yeah it's yeah. you know what i mean it might not be the cup of tea but like you you would say you know what i i like something slightly different but this is kind of dope and and so you have the variations throughout the history of hip-hop of simplistic and complex that people accept and shit that people don't accept yeah you know what i mean and for me, you know, like, I've always been the one to like the complex shit, but I can appreciate when it's simple in the, in, in yeah. the right context, you know? This next question was, um, when was the first time you met Joe Rogan, and how did you get on his podcast for the first time? So, um, I mean, I knew about Joe Rogan from the comedy, and then he was doing a TV show, and then uh, news radio, and then the Fear Factor thing, and then because I'm a martial artist, though well, I was at a time. I seen the picture uh, you posted in a while. <laughs> I was at a time. I don't train like I should, but I, so every now and then. Jiu-jitsu, if I'm correct. Uh, Shotokan. Okay, I don't know. What and that kickboxing. Is. It's a Japanese um, style of karate, and then uh, oh, kickboxing. Shit. I was Do doing. Do you like? Uh, did you ever watch that movie? Um, what the fuck's his name? Bruce Lee's teacher. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kip. Uh, Kip, um, Kip Man. Kip Man, yeah. Fucking dope ass. Dope as fuck, man. man. Damn. So the way I met Joe was, um, it, it, well, I, I knew about him through all that shit, and then he's doing Fear Factor. and then, But the thing we had in common was there's this club called Dragonfly in Hollywood. Back in the day. Back yeah. in the day. And the, this group called the Spasmatics used to do um, a show there, and it was like an 80s night theme. Like they would, they would play like they were the guys from uh, what was that fucking show? Uh, uh, no, it was a movie. Um, nerds, right? Okay, ogre. They, they, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that shit. They would, they would play as if they were nerds from the movie Nerds. They oh, would look like all okay. fucking nerdish, right? But they were called, um, they were called uh, the Spasmatics, right? Okay. And they would do all 80s covers, like all 80s music. It was none of their music. It, they were just covering everything, yeah, yeah. looking like the nerds, you know, and it was popping. I mean, like, it was packed in there. Chicks, all the things, you know what I'm saying? So you'd see some UF, UFC guys come in there, early, early UFC guys, right. not, not any of the guys you know now. Right. But Joe would come in there. And we knew some mutual people and they, you know, they introduced us there and, you know, I knew them since that time. Right, right, right. And, uh, and, uh, I can't remember the first time he asked me to be on his show, but like, it was based off of like the fact that we knew each other and, right. and I was, I was doing my live streams like from 2009 up until now and i think he knew that and i knew he was doing shit so when he asked me i was like hell yeah let's go you, you were just recently on there yeah i was just recently on there i, this, I, I saw that this is like my i think third third stop over there yeah you got the threes 
Yes, the three. In the three club. That's right. That's right. You Hell yeah. You know what? Other than yours, once in a while I watch Mike Tyson's, but I watch Joe Rogan's. Yeah. A lot of interesting uh, topics on there. Yeah. I like his style, man. He's dope. I really, really like his style. And you know what? It, I, like, I listen to all of your stuff. Yeah. Like, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm trying to remember a topic that you guys were talking about. Um, how in the dispensary business, how you guys, you, you know, even though you, your shit is legit, but how you're getting taxed. And it's oh, the yeah. people on the underground that are pretty much making all the money. Oh, they're making all the money. The black market stays making the money because, you know, they tax us so much that you have to like charge more for the product in the store and yeah. people don't get that we're not charging more to make more money we're barely making money on that right. you know what i mean it's to basically pay the fucking taxes that that we got to pay to like stay in business where yeah. whereas the black market they may be charging significantly less for for that same product but they're not paying any tax. So, you know, it's easy on them. And, and, and the state, they don't realize that they're the ones doing that shit. Right, right. right you know, right. By, by taxing it so high, at, you know, beyond 40%, um, it's, it's, it's hard to actually, like, make the margins work where you actually profit. Okay. okay. You know, especially if, if you're... Um, the, the the real way that, that anyone is actually like profiting from this is is either you got a license so you don't have a lot of overhead you're licensing out your 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 shit or you your vertical where you do everything you don't got to source anything out everything comes from you yeah. and even then the taxes are fucking high and so you got to you know you got to stay a hard line to be able to make all this stuff keep going because if you take anything less you're going to have to start cutting corners and then your products affected or the way that you could market or put it out there it yeah. all gets affected and if our little you know not little but if our governor uh -huh. you know had people that knew this shit properly in the places where they need to be the state would make money like they're making because the state's making money from cannabis. They may not admit it, but they are. Yes. If they were to do this properly, they was they, they would stay making money and they would allow us to make money over here to be able to create a bigger and better industry. But they keep fucking doing us like they're doing us. And, you know, they'll never, you know, admit where they got the surplus from, but it's the cannabis industry. Okay. And, but it's hard to operate and navigate unless you got funding because they make it tough. Yeah. Do you think they'll ever legalize uh, mushrooms? I think that it's going that way because they're seeing studies that it's helping people with depression and anxieties and, and, uh, and uh, what's the other thing? Uh, you know, the people with, um, you know, hot tempered motherfuckers people with ptsd yeah. um they're finding that like therapists are trying to use it in terms of like you know treating people to rewire th the way that they think so like if you for instance had migraines okay to dig in deep to your mind where that's at to like reconnect and like push those migraines out just as a as a small example yeah, yeah. that's that's one of the things but like they're fi they're finding that psilocybin, the mushrooms, are like helpful to to so many different things, man. So I think it's a matter of time okay. that they'll accept it. You know what I mean? Like okay. th there's places where it's legal and in places where it's acceptable, but it's just it's like cannabis. It's gonna have a slow rollout because it's still psychedelic, and you know right. people that tend to like overdo it. Yes. You know what? I want to encourage everybody to go watch that Joe Rogan and be real because you actually, you gave a lot of great info on, on how much to take if you're a first time taker. Oh, yeah. If you take a little bit more, have somebody there with you. Yes. You know, so that information is valuable if you're into mushrooms. The only mushroom that I have is when I play Super Mario Kart. Yeah. So that's pretty <laughs> much it. Yeah. Hey, look, let me tell you, man, we used to wild out, man, Cypress Hill. We were fucking wild. By the way, let me give you another shot, please. And... We used to like, we we used to fucking like, 
abuse the mushrooms, if you will. No like, shit. Yes, we would we would be doing eighths before a show and go out there and knocking shit out. So like, uh-huh. we know what it is to be in the melt, right? Right. And the melt is more like a. If you're doing it without a guide, it can go anywhere. It, okay. Depending on the frame of mind that you're in before you do it. So if you're a motherfucker that got a lot of problems, you don't want to be doing a lot of mushrooms without a guide. Now, now, now when you say a guide, <laughs> can you kind of explain like, like a guide, like a tour guide? Like I'm trying to. So like you ever heard of people doing ayahuasca, yes. right? Oh, and things yes. like that. And yes. they have a shaman there. Okay. That's a guide to guide you through what you're, you're going through. Oh, shit. So that's real. Well, yes, this is real. And it's the same thing with mushrooms if you're trying to treat yourself for something. If you're doing it, like, in the form of we're all the homies and we're just fucking going to trip together. Right. In that form, everybody should that's in the room should have done mushrooms. But one person outside the room that hasn't, that can maybe, like, guide if anything goes wrong. Now, usually if there's a room full of people on mushrooms and they're like on the same page, no one's going to trip. Everybody's going to be like cool and enjoying the space with each other. But if there's one motherfucker that's full of shit and you all know this and everybody feels this, including that person, you're going to vibe that out and you're going to be looking at the motherfucker like, okay, why are you here? And he may he or she may be tripping with you. But that vibe will tell you whether that person or not should be in your circle. No shit like it's, that? It's that, like, if you, it gets you that tuned in. And it's not paranoia. This is some real shit. Like, you know, I told, I told this story on, on, on our show one time. But we were doing a, a party for, for Kid Frost. Me and uh, Skate, well, Skate Master Tate was doing the party. Okay. I was assisting him with the DJ work. Yes. Um, and it was Kid Frost's birthday party, and him and I decide to trip before everybody gets to par- to, to Frost's party. Skate Master Tate and I, right? We fucking popped the mushrooms, and everybody came in, and we saw all our homies, and we're like, "Oh hell yeah, so and so is here." And me and him are in, on the same page; we're linked up. So I feel like I got a partner in here, even though nobody else is tripping. Right? At least him and I are connected, right? And then this one motherfucker comes in and we all knew him and he knew us. Right. And he came in and we're like, the fuck is this motherfucker doing here? And it ruined my time. I was like, cause I knew this dude was like funky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. I was a junior at this time. I could not really say anything, but I knew that this, this motherfucker was not like, he wasn't true hearted. In my, you know, in my estimation, right, right, right. and I could feel this while I was on the mushrooms, and I kept looking at him sideways, and I was I, I, like, I could have set it off at any time. That's how I felt. Okay. And and it, it it's it, and and this person, you know, he he got over on a lot of people, and and a lot of people had strong feelings that were negative about oh, this homie. Okay. So what the mushrooms were telling me and this feeling were real. Like okay. whatever I was feeling was the correct indication on this motherfucker. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and I got validated later. Not not even thinking about it, right? Someone told me, hey, man, this, this, and that, and the other happened with this homie. And I was like, oh. Same it, motherfucker. Yes, yeah, same motherfucker. And I was like, the mushrooms told me. Okay. If That's if you're tuned in. If you're at full melt. Full blown in the melt. That means taken beyond, and you're just like you know. It's like just colors and vibrations and and trails and shit like that. You may not be soaking any of that up. You're just tripping. Okay. Okay. But I was like, I was in the, I was in the the part where you could process the vibe. Okay. Someone's vibe. You know what I mean? And. That that's the part like on mushrooms, it's very fucking beneficial. You, okay. I, I wanted to ask you because I've never done any of this shit. Yeah. This is probably the most weed I've ever smoked. I know. Second okay. half. So, yeah. Second half. Okay, so now <laughs> on mushrooms, like do you cause I don't know I don't know I'm gonna try to I guess like you wouldn't see like a green naked midget running across the no, room. No. Okay. Okay, so like to give you perspective, right? So 
<laughs> this wasn't mushrooms. It, it was acid, but it's co- sort of the same thing, right? Um, but now I'll, I'll give you the mushroom story. So, you know, the way it is on mushrooms for for me, when I was at the peak at, at certain trips, right? Mm. With Cypress Hill, we we had a show in, in, I believe it was uh, Canada somewhere for maybe Lollapalooza or affiliate of Lollapalooza, right? And we had this homie out there who looked like Ronnie James Dio. His name was Sam. Okay. Called himself Sam I Am, right? And he he comes, and we never met him before. This is our first time meeting him. He, uh, at the end, he comes to, like, a lot of our... He used to come to a lot of our shows just to bring us weed and mushrooms. Oh, shit. On this day, he brings us an ounce of mushrooms, and he's like, this is for you guys. And we're like, oh, yeah. How much do we owe you? And he's like, nah, this is from Sam. I'm Sam. Sam, I am. This is for you. And then he and then he breaks out some weed, does the same thing. He doesn't charge us for any of it. Um. So we roll up the weed, but more importantly, before the show, we all pop like an eighth's worth of mushrooms before the show, right? And by the time I think we're in third song, it hits. And we're like all tripping balls, all of us, except for our sound guy. He's the only one. And uh, then... <laughs> So I'm seeing the mosh pit happen, you know, like in real time. And it's going like we always see it. Yeah. You know, and then it slows down. And then it starts trailing for me, you know, like you see people and it's trailing the people mosh, moshing. And then like, I was like, whoa. And I'm in the middle of a verse. Right. Well, this is happening. And mind you, I don't stop. But I'm seeing this. And then I focus in on some motherfuckers way in the back i don't know how i'm focused in on him because it's way at the back right and i seen this motherfucker and he's like rocking and he looks like he's got down syndrome or something oh shit and it scared the shit out of me bro like (laughs) (laughs) and then i focused back into the to the whirlwind of the mosh pit that was happening and I look back at Bobo, and he gives me this smile like, yeah, I'm here too, motherfucker. Uh-oh. Right? And, and, and so in the middle of that, right, so we're like feeling it. We get to Insane in the Brain, and someone threw a, 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 this hat up on stage that offended Sendog. And the, 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 the hat was a, a suntan lotion company called Banana Boat. And for a Cuban back in the day, that would be an insult. Yeah. But like for that day, it was like one of like a hundred hats that came up on stage because people just started throwing their hats up on stage. It wasn't an insult, but he was tripping balls and he thought someone was insulting him. So like he starts getting in this motherfucker's face. He starts talking shit to him and and, uh, we all start tripping on that. It was the trippiest show ever bro like you know we did maybe one or two tripping ball shows after that but I, you know like I, after a while i had to let it go because it was a lot of pressure yeah 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 <laughs> okay okay. okay uh let me see yes yes okay it, I, this is the question ask him how does it feel to be the chicano king of rap <laughs> 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 Look, I thank you for that. I I thank you for that. Like humbly, I fucking thank you for that. Uh, the thing about that is that like I don't play to any of those lists. One, because it it those lists don't matter to me. But the other thing is that it's always subjective. It's someone's opinion, right? And you put me on this list, and that's fucking awesome. Thank you so much, wherever the camera is at. Just um, point over there. Um, but I've never been looked at as the Chicano rapper, no matter if we, as Cypress, put out Spanish songs or I put out Spanish songs with Tony Touch or, um, or doing the shit I did with Psycho Realm. Pitbull as well, right? And Pitbull. Yeah. And Mark Anthony with that. I never get looked at as a Chicano rapper, even though I'm half Mexican. Yeah. 
Um, they don't give me that. Uh, I'm a rapper. Right. And, you know, because my name is not Chicano, right? Like, originally, if I had stood with my father's last name, it would be Carvajal, Carvajal. Oh, okay. Right? Like the boxer. Who is my cousin? Is it Michael Carvajal? Yeah. Who knocked out Chiquita Gonzalez? That's right. Wow. Motherfucker Michael. That's my cousin. Salute, primo, if you're watching. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm a Carvajal. I used my great-grandfather's last name. It's German. Because I used to get, and most of my family used to get trouble under Carvajal. And a lot of them around, were around here in Wilmington and in Pedro and all that stuff. Yeah. So, like, to not get any more fucked with, I went with oh. my great-grandfather's last name. So, like, people, you know, they look at that and a number of things, you know what I mean? So, like, I don't get that he's a Chicano rapper thing. And I never really made what is known as chicano rap like right. the way others have made it like i've made latino um based hip-hop but right. as far as chicano rap goes they don't put me in that category so like i respect that you put me in that you know yeah. like that that that, that yeah. person did but like and i accept that if you know because there was a there was a a, a a fucking instagram post not long ago on who's the king of chicano rap and, you know, a lot of people were putting up King Little G, and I agree with that. Okay. Like, for me, my man is fucking killing it. But uh, some folks were like, well, what about... <laughs> what about, <laughs> What yeah. about Be Real? Yeah. And I said, hey, listen, I'm, I'm Mexican, so that makes me Chicano. But, like, in terms of that style... Right. I didn't necessarily go heavy on doing that style. One thing that I've learned, that if you're a lyricist, they won't consider you Chicano rap. And that's crazy because there's a lot of, you know, lyrical Chicano rapper, rappers that don't get that, that don't get that play. Yeah, right. Well, well it's because you got to be talking about some, some other shit, but we'll leave yeah. it, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tony, Tony, ask be real. What does the track premonitions with Psycho Realm <laughs> mean to him? <laughs> oh man. Uh, that's a trippy track because I wrote that way before all that shit that I said in the track actually happened. Oh, no shit. Oh yeah, that was like a prophecy. It was well, you know. <laughs> sometimes I'd be prophesying. <laughs> so they say, yeah. I mean, I wrote that song. Like that whole Cycle Realm album is is different in a way because I mean, you know, it's although it's street, um, it's very political and conspiracy theorist, um, type of vibe. Before that was a popular thing. Right. Right. So like, for instance, and I, I might have mentioned this in the show. I was one of the shows that I was here last. But like, are you experienced is a song that if you take the first word of every of uh, the first letter of every word in the song from from mine and Jack's verse and even to some of Duke's verse, he kind of cheated on his. But the first letter, it all spells out a phrase. We all spell out a phrase. Oh, wow. Talking about the New World Order and all this other shit, right? So we were doing some different things on that. And uh, I, I was glad that they that they allowed me to come in. Because at first I was just going to be an executive producer on it and try to put them out. Right, right, Because right. I thought they were so fucking dope. Like from yeah. when I met them to what, what they evolved into from when I came back off of, off of tour... Yeah, Jack was doing his own beats and he had a completely different style. And Duke had flipped his style. I was like, I want in. Yeah. Can I get in? Yeah, let me in. Either way, I'm gonna fuck with y'all. But like, let me in. And they were like, Yeah, come in. And so I I put in some ideas that like I couldn't necessarily do with Cyprus, which was Are You Experienced, yeah. and and the other one La Conecta, which connected the songs and told the little story I, I actually wanted to do a whole album like that but that was the for, with psycho realm that that presented me the chance to, to to connect two songs like a story almost like a short yeah yeah okay uh my next question is because we have a lot of questions so, run it uh here it is right here um uh, where is it oh yeah will the fool on fro ever make a comeback no <laughs> maybe <laughs> Okay. I, you know what? I can't ro grow it as robust as I used to. And it would be very uh, salt and peppery, man. I'm 52 now. So, you know, it's going to be as, you know, like little patches. Like my, my, well, my beard is more gray now than it used to be. But, yeah, if I grew that shit out, 
It'd be like, remember the Bride of Frankenstein? She yes. had all the. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It'd be like yes. some shit like this. Okay. The next question is this is an interesting one. If you could cup the whole world in the palm of your hands, what would you say to it? <laughs> that, that's a question. Hey, by the way, if anybody wants any shots, please, uh, Norbert, uh, pass it around, okay? I'd say act right. Act right, okay. Today, you talked about, honestly, about uh, at the very end. Pride. Pride, bro, that was fucking powerful, man. Thank you, sir. That was fucking powerful. I, I, I don't care if anybody ever tells you anything about that stuff like that. That stuff does mean things to people, and it meant something to me. Thank you, sir. Um, I feel like... You know, because I've been doing it so long and it's a platform that like, you know, I feel like I got to have that that sort of message that empowers people within themselves, yes. but also messages of take responsibility for your shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not just celebrate yourself when you're doing something good, but like take responsibility for yourself when you didn't like when you fucked up mm -hmm. and 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 be big enough to accept it. And and whether it, there's an apology or just accepting, like you know what I fucked up, yeah, and I gotta be better. And you know, look, because God has given me a lot, the way that, the way that I see it for 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 the life that I've had and where I've gotten to. Yes. So I feel like you know God's trumpet. I got to play his song. That's so awesome. so if it's a if it's a thing where I'm like trying to instill some some good thoughts and good vibes and good energy into people. Even if it's for that small time at the end of the show, I feel like it's important because that's what he put me here to do. All the songs, you know, people tell me like, Hey man, this song did this and that for me. And that's a part of it. Um, but now into this new phase that I'm in, this is also a part of it. So like I got this platform and people are plugging in and fucking with me. I got to say this by the grace of God, because, you know, without the blessing, I'm not here because, wow. I mean, you and I know that that sort of lifestyle. And I, I don't exaggerate. I, I was in that shit for real. Yeah. And uh, I don't celebrate it or hold it up like you see a lot of these new cats do, because, you know, it was a part of of what it took to get me here. But like I was getting out of that shit. Yeah. Not celebrating and say to these young kids like, hey, this is the way that you get to me or get to this position I'm in or others like me. You got to run this. Nah, you ain't got to run that. There's other options. This is just the way that I ran. And I'm telling you through this way that I ran that there are options out of it. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I always try to focus on, on a positive at the end and, and feed people some good shit. You know, at least try. No, that's a beautiful thing because we've got enough people right now feeding people bullshit. And honestly, so I could appreciate all that amazing positivity because, you know what? I mean, it just turned into a positive message and, and uh, I benefited from it. So Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, oh, let me see. <laughs> hey, man, I've, I've had to break myself and say that I was wrong many times. They're like like the Fonz. Remember when the Fonz, uh, it was like, I was a... I'm a, hey, man, that shit is so hard. It is hard. It is hard. It is hard. But you know what? I, when I do apologize, I'm going to tell you what I don't like to say. My bad. That, yeah. To me, that don't mean shit, That's bro. That's dismissive, yeah. Yeah. To me, that means shit. I dropped the ball, homie, you know? Yeah. No, I want to say... Bro, I fucked up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, there's it, there's nothing to that. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make you any less. Right. Because we're human. We're all flawed. We fuck up. You yeah. know what I mean? And far be it from me to judge you for the fuck up because I fucked up too. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, yes. the, we got to be able to, like, look past that shit and be like, you know what? All good. Let's keep it moving. Absolutely. And people don't do that shit enough. No, they don't. They don't. Be real, are you part of the Skull and Bones Secret <laughs> Society? <laughs> I made an album called Skull and Bones, but that's as far as it goes, man. Okay. You know, the only thing I'm a part of is, look, I'm a priest in Ifa, right? Santeria, people know about this if they look it up. 
um, and it doesn't allow me to be a part of any other order like Illuminati or Skull and Bones or, you know, Masons or anything like right. I cannot join any of it. So, right. and a lot of people have, have thought this because of the Skull and Bones album and because some of the the song titles because uh, you know mugs likes fucking with people yeah yeah and and you know mugs is my big bro and him and i you know we've always been on the same page with a lot of shit so you know we know that this stirs up shit so like yeah we'll make an album called skull and bones and and we do read these books we know about them okay. he's a little bit deeper into that shit than i am okay um but yeah you know okay. um in, in terms of being a part of an order, hell no, nah, I can't. I'd be punished for what I do if 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 I was getting down with some shit like that. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, let me ask you this: Is the Illuminati real? Is that a real thing? I mean, I I would say that there's something to it. I okay. mean, I can't like it ain't nothing you can actually prove, right? But right, right, right. I would say that there are people that have gotten looks in the industry that like wow. you're like totally like how the fuck did they get a look or how do they continue to get a look like what is the network that this motherfucker's in right, right, that right. they continue to get these looks that like maybe they you know like you see other people that maybe should be in their position yet that person's in it so yeah i mean there might be some shit to it i mean there is a skull and bones we know this that anybody that goes to yale or, or harvard gets <laughs> recruited you know like the standout yeah. immaculate motherfuckers yes, get yes. recruited into this this order from from those ivy league schools so i mean if there's a skull and bones there obviously <laughs> probably is uh, an, an illuminati you know what right, I'm right 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 okay okay and if listen if i was a part of it i'd be much bigger yeah think yeah, about yeah. that <laughs> exactly okay before i forget my question because we're stoned yes <laughs> yes yes it's funny because i'm listening to you and at one point i thought my body do one of these and i had to stop i'm like okay is that me or <laughs> we're here we're right here bro <laughs> okay fuck you know what last time i had mezcal was with bobo yeah and i was right in the middle of a story and i go like this and bobo and I, will do that and i said i forgot what the fuck i was gonna say bobo's that right? guy he will make you forget some shit yeah and he goes yeah <laughs> that's my that's my partner yeah. you know how like they used to say crime you're crimey you're crime partner. right right i right. mean like back in the day man like bobo and i and still to this day man you know like our whole crew is tight now like we don't like not kick it together you know that's what i'm saying thing, but bobo yeah. and i have rode together for a long time he's 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 uh a, a part of the reason why cypress hill stood together in the times where where send dog was absent and and mugs was absent right. you know what i mean like if it was if it was not for bobo we could not have carried it on because like at least i had him and Estevan. Yeah. salute to Estevan, who would go on tour and the three of us as cypress hill and a couple of our our, our other homies that would like come and do the hype man role and shit like this right. jack did it duke did it our homie shag rest in peace did it baron ricks for a time did it because he was on one of the albums um but mainly because bobo was up there doing a lot of send shit you know oh, sometimes shit. delivering sends verses sometimes background well a lot of the times background because send taught him to do it yeah it it doesn't last as long if he doesn't stay in pocket with me because it would have been absent for so long that people would have been like on to something different yeah yeah so okay. you know i always salute to my bro because like him and i and Estevan and some of the guys that like you know played the roles they they put the work in to keep it moving yeah you know what Estevan is dope dope fucking dude i've had him here maybe like five times yeah okay the big and, bro yes and i'm about to see him again uh to live and die in la so let me give it to live and die in la frankie orozco make sure you guys go to to live and die in la next saturday i believe hey and i want to give a salute to the, to the lafc 
Okay, yes. Because I they have- brought home a championship to Los Angeles. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Not, not, you know, not to anywhere else, but to Los Angeles. And, you know, I, I'm an LAFC fan. I got to drum in the drum line. I'm going to ask you something about that. Yeah, okay. Bobo and I got to drum in the drum line for most of the season when we were home. Yeah. Um, with the 3252 salute to all y'all. Um, it was awesome, man, to like be able to be a part of that that experience, the championship run, being there, drumming. Well, how, how did you get connected with that? that? That was my question. So, like, DJ Flick was putting together the, the song for the team. Okay, he had Kid Ink, and he wanted me, so they reached out to me, and I was like, "All right, let me hear the track," and I was like, "Okay." Flick gave us a fucking dope A dope popping track So And Kid Ink did his thing on it So I was like alright yeah This is an easy snap and hell yeah Um, And I'm Team LA I, I've known about this team for a long time Bit, Hadn't been able to go to games Because I was like constantly on tour When yeah. seasons were popping But because of the pandemic Slowed us all down So I could kind of be home In this time where I would normally be touring okay. Right And uh so I got a chance to go to one of the games after I did the song. They liked the song, so they were like, "Yeah, hey, be real, come down to uh, to the bank, as it was called then. Now it's called BMO." And uh, so I went there, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is tight!" Like the whole stadium was filled up with people rooting yes. for this LAFC team. Um. And I was like blown away because I didn't know that it was that big. And then I look over to the 3252 section and it's much like European football there where it's like fanatics, like crazy, shit. you know, like black hole Raider shit. Okay. okay. Like to the max. And I was like, oh man, next time I come to the game, can I go up there? into the crazy section and they're like oh hell yeah you can do whatever you want let's go my man rich orozco salute to him because he put that shit together um so the the very next game i went up there and i went up there with chavo and exhibit exhibit came to the game and he found out i was going up into that section he was like i'm going with you and chavo was like i'm going with you because i mean we're boys this, these are yeah. my homies right yeah. so we go up there and we play the drums up there and it was like fucking crazy they win the game and we're up there playing and i was like i'm gonna play the drums every time so i like we got cool with the coordinator up there and we're like hey every time i come to the games i'm not sitting down at the field with the, the other celebrities coming up here with you motherfuckers and i'm bringing bobo with me and they were stoked to have bobo because they know bobo's a drummer he's a percussionist yeah, he's yeah. a fucking legend yes and they're like, oh, hell yeah, Bobo. And, and so I bring him up there with me. And we're fucking like, when, when we're in town, like I said, it wasn't for every, every single game. But the, sing, the, the games that we were in town for, we were there playing. And they won all those games that we were there for, including the championship game. It was fucking awesome. I'm, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to definitely. Oh, you got to go time. next season, man. It's, it's like an experience. You know, Like, look. I, I got season tickets to Laker games. I go to those. I've been there at the championships. It was dope. Rams, dope. I like I wasn't at the championship games, but like dope. But like there is and the Kings, dope, wild energy, but nothing. Nothing like LAFC is crazy. And I'm sorry, Galaxy fans. I'm so sorry. That's LA County, Carson. This shit is L.A. They fucking killed it, bro. I'm sorry. All, all, all good. All good. You know what? Earlier you were talking about conspiracies, and I have to ask you about this one individual because you were on Joe Rogan yes. several times. Are you an Alex Jones fan? <laughs> you know, in the beginning, when he first came out and he was exposing shit that we, like, a lot of us, like, had a feeling about, right? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you know what? This motherfucker... Might be on to something. Is on to something. And then he exposed the the secret society, um, the Bohemian... Bohemian Grove. Uh, Bohemian Grove and all that stuff and how the, all the world leaders gathered there and they do this, these crazy rituals. So you're like, yes, this motherfucker right here. Um, but when he started picking sides, I think that's when he started losing people that were yeah. like, yo, because he'd never picked a side before. He was like calling shit out on both sides. Right, right. Which was 
That's me. Like, I don't trust neither of them. I don't trust, like, either side of politics. People that, like, identify in the parties, cool, because we're regular-ass people. But the guys running the parties is yes. two different things than the people that follow the parties and the people that run it, right? And I was never a fan of the motherfuckers that run it. And he was always calling shit out on both parties. And then, he, you know, one guy validates him and he starts leaning into that party and that's when he lost me because like i don't validate any of those fucking parties uh it's not a real party to me okay <laughs> because i've seen him several times on joe rogan yeah and he's wild he's wild like for a time he had it right you know and then and then he sort of like went to to somewhere where people were like nah some people embraced it yeah. and others were like nah fuck that like where you're going i cannot follow you there and then i think when it was the vitamin things when he starts selling these vitamins for double the price that you can get these regular ass vitamins you know right right, at, right you know for a cheaper price but because it's got this guy's name on it they're more expensive they're, these are special fucking Whoa. vitamins wow. they're way better than these ones over here and that's never the truth yeah yeah, no, you know, that's very true. And he got caught in that. And then, you know, the biggest thing, man, the, the fucking Sandy Hook thing. Sandy Hook like thing. that, that right there. Like, I think you're ready I mean, for another was, one. <laughs> <laughs> I was checking to see if there was yeah, I one. Saw that. It was. I saw that. <laughs> okay, so Alex Jones, yeah, you know what? About the whole Sandy Hook thing, what but, he said, I believe it was fake. But I'll tell you what, I would have him on anyway. Really? I would have him on. Yeah. I would see what, he, what he's what he got to fucking say. Not because I'm, I'm buying into any of his shit. Right. But if you really truly believe in freedom of speech, yeah. why not engage it? And then, like, call him on it. Like, say, yeah. okay, so why did you... You know, like it, it, uh, when he's going up against a fucking prosecutor, of course, you're going to G up like everybody does against. Uh, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But hey. like when you're on the platform, like of which like the style of you do, you know, it's intimate. People can read your body language. Are you full of shit? Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> One thing he said on Joe Rogan, he goes, the, the, the elitists of Washington, they get together and they take up. Uh, uh, psychedelics and they meet with this intergalactic beings and they give them the newest technology. Hmm. And I go, that would be a fucking great ass movie. That would be a great movie. <laughs> I mean, like how come they haven't written that shit? But hey, listen, some of what he says, it's not that it's maybe not off like possibility. Right. It's just the fact that he's saying it. That he's saying it. Yes. You know what I mean? Because I mean, look, it, how many people have been reporting, you know, UFOs or UAPs as they try to la label them now. UFOs, unidentified flying objects. UAPs, uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon. Okay. And, they're sh and they're shooting some of them down. Those ain't. Those are just fucking balloons, balloons. though. Yeah, yeah. Those ain't like because to me, we don't have the technology yet to shoot right. a real UAP or a U real UFO down. Okay, I got. The, I got. The, let's uh, move into. Because or maybe we do. Who knows? Right. Okay, because right now I'm a, I, th I think I'm high. I know we're high. Okay. I know I'm high, so you're probably high too. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, the, you mentioned UFOs. So do you believe in aliens like UFOs? Yeah, I think you got to believe that there's something else out there, man. You okay. know, some of our technology is kind of crazy. And you wonder, like, where did this come from? Like, okay. did, could man really think of this? How could he harness this without some sort of, you know, nudge forward by something a little bit more intelligent than okay. we are? Okay. It's um, a possibility, I'm saying. Okay, because, you know, I have this other podcast called Freaky Tales. Yes. And we just talk I about know all it. this shit. You know. I know it, yes. Oh, yeah. Bigfoot. He believe in Bigfoot. Bigfoot. It, I mean, no one's ever really caught one. Right, right. No one's ever really caught one on tape proper so you could say that like that shit ain't real but like in terms of if if you're seeing shit flying around in the sky now these days and they can't discount all right. of it like they used to because of technology and all these platforms you can't debunk everything like yeah it's a possibility it's possible that it's out there has anybody ever caught one on tape no right so okay. it's still for debate 
Okay, so when you say they caught one, so you're actually believing that there's, if you will, more than one. It could be because, I mean, like, look, what you got shows like Paranormal Activity caught on tape. Right, right. They don't just look at spirits and look at UFOs. They also look at the so-called Bigfoot phenomenon, yeah. right? And they've showed people who claim to have picked it up, you know, on their phones, like going out in the wilderness in the forest type areas and capturing something that's not a fucking bear, you right, know? Right. So when you think about, okay, how much of that shit is real and how much of that shit is set up, you just yeah, never, right. you just could never know. Right. Right. Unless you were there to see it with the person fucking filming. So it's hard to say. It, is it possible? Yeah, I think it's possible. Okay. Has anybody Good. ever caught like real shit that they could actually, without a doubt. Right. That's still yet to be, you know, determined. But like again, with 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 paranormal activity caught on tape, um, or camera actually paranormal activity caught on camera. Tape. Yeah, we still <laughs> say tape. It's camera. Um, they have an argument there, like because yeah. people say they've caught it. You don't know whether it's set up or or it's real, but a lot of people argue it's set up. Okay, okay. Because they don't want to believe some shit like that. I, 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 I love this stuff, and I'll tell you why. Because I was raised with a dad that believed in UFOs. He believed in aliens. Well, he never called them aliens or Martians. He called them humanoids. Humanoids. And, and he believed in Bigfoot. Uh, he believed in La Llorona. He believed in demon possession. Everything. So I kind of grew up listening to a movie through my dad. Well, when you think about it, the spiritual stuff exists. Okay. Um, entities, energies, they all exist. Okay. Um, it's whether you're... It's whether you're in tune to them or you're like totally distracted in real life that you can't feel it or see it because some people never see it or feel it or experience it. Right. But some some of us do and some of us are in, it, you know, it, sort of linked to it. And some of the, us are magnets for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there was a movie and, I, and maybe you've heard of this because we're around the same age. You're a little bit older than I am, but like. There's a movie called The Entity. Remember that? Yes. That was based off a true story. Okay. Where this chick, where this wife, or this family lived in this house, and this energy of some sort, which was a demonic energy, yeah. uh, was raping her every night. And people thought that she was fucking tripping, that she was crazy. She brings in a priest. The priest can't explain what the fuck is happening to her. Um, the husband, I believe, leaves, and then the par the investigator, which would be known as a paranormal investigator today, yeah, yeah. Um, sees it happen and gets thrown around by the the entity. Well, it's try he's trying to intervene and stop the rape from happening, oh, and yeah, yeah. and then that's an old movie, yeah. And at some point, she tries to leave this place and say you know what i'm moving out of this house i'm moving to another city and the entity ends up in the car with her and like tries to crash the car so to like wow. make her stay or whatever you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was a real story and this was not her tripping because like you know this is shit that happens like a paranormal caught on on camera you see people that just move into a place and they don't know the energy that was you know, in this place previous to them getting there. You're absolutely right, yeah. And they see a bunch of crazy shit or hear a bunch of crazy shit happening, they fucking lose their fucking mind. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, really quick, uh, what Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback, fucking amazing quarterback from Stanford, now plays for, well, been playing Green for Bay. Green Bay. Okay. He's been on this ayahuasca trip. Yes. Uh, and um, he said that now he can't stop seeing this silhouette of a man in a, a huh. black hat, I guess, or a, or a, yeah. a hat. I've heard that from yeah. people that do that. Really? Where they stay in. Like, uh, I, I knew this, uh, wifey and I knew this person who had been taking ayahuasca to, like, you know, connect with something. Yeah. To have an epiphany of some sort. And, and something stood with her. And she even showed, like, sometimes when she would take a picture in the mirror, it would be something else. It wouldn't be her that was in the image. It would be oh, an shit. image of someone else. 
It would, and it would be a female, but it would be a different female. It wouldn't be her. And it wasn't like no filter. It wasn't like a, wow. an effect because they didn't exist then. Wow. And so some folks come back with some shit. And, and, it, and to me, that <clears throat> it always happens when you don't do it with a guide oh, wow. or a shaman. Okay. You do that shit like because you're partying all your peoples are with you and you encounter something in that world that you're in that you can't explain yeah. and you bring back with you because there's no one out there that tells you how to shake that oh shit okay. you know i'm gonna ask my boy to uh put up a question on the live chat do you guys want to see be real back to talk just paranormal because i'm loving this shit bring it <laughs> make sure you guys put that on there okay, okay uh fuck okay let me regroup. All right. I, I, yeah, I, I've experienced a few things with Please that share, share with paranormal us. shit, like in our studio. Oh, yeah. There's somebody there. Oh, yeah. There's an old man. There's We call it the old man, the spirit. Okay. And, and he's moved shit in front of us many times. We bought uh, beer cans. Uh, just recently, our in-house roller runner-up, second to Pedro. Um, uh, he was rolling some shit up. And... The bottle moved the, like a plastic bottle with no condensation moved right in front of him. Now, this is after all this other shit has happened in our studio where shit flies off of, off of a shelf and, uh, you know, things, just different things that, like, you can explain away, but we actually saw it happen, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we encounter this stuff in our studio, and we know, notice it, it happens when it's negative energy. Whatever spirit that is in our building, it doesn't like negative energy, and it will let us know, you know, when, when, when it's present, like, hey, y'all chill the fuck out. Don't bring that negative energy. And we think it's the, the man who built the place. Okay. Because there was a there the the guy who built the place was like a guy who like he owned a bunch of um, buildings downtown. Yeah. That he built. He had a construction company. Him and his family they built them, and uh, so I think this spirit who died maybe in his fifties or sixties is attached to the buildings, because one day, um, and this is shit is random as fuck. T. <laughs> Um, we were chilling and we were talking about the old man, the spirit, like, and how we were, it, it, how it had moved the can in front of God the Father. We were talking about that. Yeah. Godfather, Hall of Famer, WWE, Papa Shango, and all that, right? Because he's, he's also a regular yes, on the show. I've seen that. We were talking about his episode and how the old man presented himself when homie called him out. And we're like, damn, that, that's crazy how this happened. And, whoop de wop just shooting the shit about it and some dude out of nowhere like fucking rings our fucking ring bell right and we're like who the fuck is this guy at the door like we had no one had ever seen him right right and who we leased the building from is the, the old lady the wife that of the husband okay who who uh owns the building the family still owns the building but yes. it's in the wife wife's care right <laughs> And once in a while, she will send people to see that we're not growing cannabis in the building. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so she'll send people, right? So this dude comes out of nowhere, and we're thinking he's like one of these fucking guys to come investigate, right? Yeah. And he just busts in a, a random story like, man, I remember when my father laid the first brick in this building. Mm. He loved this place. I said, your dad built this building. And he goes, yeah, my father built like five, six, seven buildings down here downtown. This was one of them. I was here when the first brick was laid. I said, you know what? Your father's still here. And he goes, what? What do you mean? And I told him some of the shit that happened in the building. And he was like, that's crazy. Because in the other buildings that we own, the managers of those buildings have told us similar stories. Similar story. Wow. So energy is real. It's, <clears throat> okay. It's like um you know, it resonates. So if you love a place and you're connected to it when you pass over before you go to wherever you go, you might decide to stay here cuz you're connected to it. It's much like violence 
violence. We we just had this chick, um, Susan Slaughter, who is on that show, Paranormal okay. Activity, caught on camera, um, and she was talking about how she lived in this. What what was the spot, um, Pedro? Uh, she lived by the spot Los Los Globos in like oh. Hollywood somewhere, like East East Hollywood. No, it was Pico 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 District okay. P- Pico Union around there. And a lot of gang banging shit had happened in that area where she lived. Yeah. And one day, and she's like a spiritualist. Like she, she sees and feels different energies. Like she's wow. a magnet for this, right? And she was talking about how she, one day she woke, like she woke up out of a sleep because she couldn't breathe. She was fucking breathing heavy. And when she woke up, she saw an apparition okay. of a homie that looked like, uh, a gangster goatee ball head tattoos standing on her chest no shit and it wasn't like a real person it was an a- apparition but it was looking at her like fucking pissed off and like you know it wanted to like do harm to her yeah and she like got into this state and somehow like fucking meditated off of it or had patience and waited for the apparition to right, go right, away right. But what she was saying and what in the theory for me is that like a lot of violence when it happens in a place, it's like a magnetic energy, like the earth feeds off of it. Wow. So in that place, so many drive bys and deaths happen. Yeah. So that energy is a residual of that. It's much like when you go to a certain place and there's probably places here, right? That you go to where accidents happen all the time and someone yeah. might lose their life. Yeah. Some people just get into a regular accident, but in that place, a lot of people lose their life. Yeah. yeah and right. that's a residual of that energy that happens there. The earth feeds off of it. Wow. Okay. Well, we know that man is in your building. I've been there three times. Has he ever said anything about me? <laughs> <laughs> He's never said anything about you, bro. Okay. That, that's a good thing. Okay. Uh, let me get back to these questions. He's cool for the most part. Uh huh. Okay, somebody, I think this might be, I don't know if this is the right, because people get offended stick for anything. Is this still okay? Is is this, it? (laughs) I'm right there with you, bro. Thank you. (laughs) Is it still okay to say stoner? That doesn't offend nobody, right? I don't get offended by that. I don't think anybody does. Okay. You know. I think this is a stoner question. Because it says, which is scarier, alien life or galactic loneliness? loneliness probably to okay. feel like you're out there by yourself yeah but i don't know if we're by ourselves we're not definitely on this world we live with billions of motherfuckers here but like you know in terms of the galaxy right are we really alone could we be alone are we the only motherfuckers with the kind of technology we got right. and our shit might be outdated let's might just say yeah yeah uh well okay let me do you believe in uh what do you call it uh, um no, those people turn into lizards. Lizard people? What the fuck? Reptilians. Reptilians, yeah. I don't know. I mean, anything's possible, but like, I, man, I've yet to see and see some shit like that. But, it, you know, hey. Okay. I mean, if you believe in aliens, you believe that that, that could be possible. Okay. All because right. supposedly, yeah. right, if you read this book called Behold the Pale Horse by Behold the Pale Horse William yes. Cooper, yes. who passed away uh, from assassination. Apparently, really, yeah, that's what they say. Okay, like his followers say he was assassinated, but you know he says that there was like five or six different alien species that have visited this Earth. You right. know, in the time where he was an admiral in the Navy or something like this, or 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 he held a position in the Navy can't remember exactly what it was but he claims this and he claims to have seen communication and things like that that presidents like from eisenhower and up have been dealing with with aliens and stuff like that that aliens have lived here forever wow you know what i'm saying so it's it's a it's a possibility you can't count it out you know what my dad is told here's what he believed he believed that one day we were going to have alien contact but he goes but he said, Antonio, yes, yes, aquí. they're already here. Yeah. So I would say, okay, where? And he said this, one day you're going to see them. Here's what he would always tell me. They're going to come out of the ocean. Yep. 
And then he would say, then one day, possibly even the desert, nobody goes out there. Probably, and the mountains. Yes. You so, know, and the thing is, is that I think if, if, and this is a big if, obviously, yeah, yeah. right? If they're, if they're actually real, right? Right. And they don't tell us this stuff. It's because they feel like we cannot process this. That we, I, I, I believe that. That we would go ape shit crazy yeah. and fuck up beyond, you know, repair. Yeah. Can yeah. you imagine a girl saying, I think I boned a reptilian? Yeah. I think I, I, I boned an that alien. Would, that would be a lot to process. Yeah, it would be a lot to process. <laughs> That'd be no a lot wonder to... he was big. He was, <laughs> it was out of this world. <laughs> he has a lizard dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay who smokes more weed you or seth rogan probably me okay probably you okay uh let me see only one joint left on earth who are you sharing it with if not why who am i sharing my last joint with yeah there's only one joint left would you, or would you share it? Yes or That's no? That's a fucked up question. Nah, you know what? We don't share joints. I'd be smoking that shit to myself. Okay. Do you want another one? I'm oh, you good. still I'm got good. yours. I still got mine. I'm sipping this last all one. All good. Right? All good. <laughs> Somebody was taking a hit over this one, like you. Yeah, I'd be I'd diving. be smoking that last joint to the head, like we always do. Okay, like we always do about this time. Hmm. Okay. Let me see. Um. What has been your favorite thing to do while high so far? Is there a favorite thing? I never. Well, it's hard yes, to I can't say I got. Yeah, I am high right now. But <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to have a favorite thing to do when you're high. Because, okay. like, I do everything high. Okay. Pretty much. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, um, archery is cool, though. Archery, yeah, yeah. I've been like, I like my me and my my daughter and I, for proper grammar's sake, my daughter and I will will go do archery, and she's she's really good. I was like tripping on how good she got, like, cause she'll go when I'm 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 on the road, yeah, and she'll go with the instructor, and she's got a good eye shooting lefty. I could shoot both hands, but I shoot better on righty. And uh, to me, like it 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 was like, yeah, man. That, that shit right there. Like, I, I do a lot of shit when I'm high, but, like, that right there, because it gets me in this different mode. Now, now with archery, you're talking about the arrow thing. Not not crossbow. Like, actual bow and arrow shit. Okay. Now, because I've seen videos of you with axes. With the, yeah, with, with the, the, axe. with the axes. You were pretty damn good with that shit. I could, I'm ambidextrous with shit like that. I could throw left or right. I, I like throwing the axes. The, the the double axe is a little bit harder. You got to, you know, with the two hands okay. and overhead throw. It's it's a little you got to get used to it, but I like doing shit like that because I've always been like a physical person wanting to like yeah. challenge myself and shit like that. And so doing a little shit like that, man, I, I like I, I think people should do that because it's good for your fucking actual. It's Definitely. good for your brain, too. Yeah. For your for your mind and muscle memory and all this shit to connect. You know, that shit is important. So like I stay doing shit like this because it, it's dope. it's good for you that's the bowling okay. go bowling you know what i tried bowling i'm gonna tell you this i got really fucking good and then i just stopped i thought that i could be really fucking good at bowling you could because because the guy who taught me after about a month or so i started beating him yeah and he was like how in the hell is that happening I was like, I don't know, because you know how they have like those the the, the arrows. Yes, the yes, ar and yes. you got to target the arrows. I'm very good at that. Yes, yeah, a lot of people skip that when they bowl. They don't. They're not even targeting the arrows, you know. And depend how your fucking rotation and your spin is, you got to hit that right arrow. Yes, and, and unless I learned that very young because I was good when, when I was a kid. When I, you know, now I'm okay. But right, right, when right. I was a kid, I was pretty fucking badass at bowling. Because I knew the arrow work. Someone taught me at the young age, hey, hit this arrow. The way you're rolling, you need to hit this arrow. People that roll this way, they have to hit this arrow. So it's all about knowing that and knowing when you got to hit that arrow. If you hit it too close before, yes. you know what I'm saying? It's all yes. on the release too, you know what I mean? So for me, that's all good shit for the mind. Okay. No, it is. It is. Yeah. This is an off the wall question. What about hopscotch? Does anybody still play hopscotch? <laughs> hopscotch. What about jacks? I think people Remember jacks? do. Yeah, jacks. I ain't seen that in a while. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, here's another one. Uh, if you stop smoking, do you think it would negatively affect your music creativity? No. No. Okay. Because musically, we, you know, that's what we do. We're, we're creative people. We shouldn't be leaning on weed or anything else to be creative. A lot of the songs that I wrote okay. were, sometimes weren't, you know, I wasn't high. Okay. Like, for instance, uh, Stone is the Way to Walk. I wasn't high. I was on the bus, and I was rem I was memorizing the rhyme from Gardena to Hollywood because I lived in Gardena or Torrance. I lived right around the street from the Rhodium. I was on yeah. 162nd and Van Ness, and I had to take the bus over on Crenshaw in front of El Camino College to go down to Hollywood, and then, you know, wherever that dumped me, walk over to Muggs's crib over uh, in the cannon. That was a long ass apartment. ride, right? It was a long <laughs> ass ride, and 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 in that ride one day, I I memorized the song to to uh, Stone is the way of the walk. I didn't write it ever. I was just thinking of the phrases, like the way that Jay Z and and um, and Lil Wayne and and Biggie and Everlast do their. Ver we're doing their verses like all here memorizing it never yeah. writing it down that's the one and only cypress song that i did that to wow stone is the way to walk wow you know what and i'm glad that people got to are hearing this because you rode the motherfucking bus to go to the pretty much the studio yeah pretty much because we worked at Muggs's crib on a little yeah. four track recorder okay uh let me see uh, this is a good ass question at least for me what would hip hop be today if there was no Cypress Hill? It would be stale as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think we brought something different to it because we, we you know, like we like NWA brought a non give a fuck attitude, yes. but, in, but in a different form. Yes. That was like not just for motherfuckers in the hood but motherfuckers that were like living in the suburbs and 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 you know if you were living you know if you were an alternative fan or if you're a punk rock or metal fan you related to to the way that we did not give a fuck um and, and that was big you know we did not expect motherfuckers to be like on on the wavelength that that ended up being you know we thought we made some good shit yeah but we didn't know who was going to accept it or not. And and when we got invited to Lollapalooza, that's what opened it up as to motherfuckers from the hood felt like we were a voice for them. Like NWA, yeah. right? We're a yeah. voice for motherfuckers that come from where we come from. But then it took the kids from the suburbs and above to absorb that and say, I get it. And Lollapalooza was that. Hell yeah. You know, them bringing us in and allowing those kids to see what we were putting down and them saying, I fucking get it. And then doing what they did with the mosh pits and the stage yes. diving and the, and all that shit, it just added on to what we were already doing. And it, it, that was it right there. That, that understanding from kids that weren't from where we grew up. Right. You know, one thing I, I want to, I want to say once again, not only have we traveled around the world several times, not only, do you have a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Not only have you sold millions of records, but you also played, performed, rapped in front of thousands of people. Woodstock. Yeah. What was the What was the number there? That was like a uh, half a million, close to half a million people, like four hundred eighty four thousand people, something wow. like that. It was the biggest crowd we had done. I mean, we had done festivals up to that point, not many. Right. But we had done some festivals that were, were where we were seeing like thirty, forty thousand at the biggest seventy thousand. When they asked us to do that, we didn't anticipate what it would be. We were just like, "Oh, Woodstock, hell yeah, let's do it!" And right. when they flew us in, like some of us came in by boat, uh -huh. and some of us flew in on on the helicopter. And I was one of the ones that flew in on helicopter and seeing the enormity of that like fucking what a close to half a million people look like gathered in one place it was like fucking crazy as what does it mean i have to ask you did you get nervous performing in front of them like when we first came out and i saw the people i was yeah wow fuck yeah i was like like what's the first word <laughs> Because I had never seen a concentration of people like that before. It was nuts, man. And what? What's, have you seen that documentary on Woodstock on, on the third one? 
Okay. On on it's on Netflix. No, I have not. Oh my god, it's called Trainwreck. You okay, sh- you should watch down. this. It's okay. hey man, it's it's fucked up. Um, like our Woodstock. Yours it, was the second one. If I yeah, ours right? was the second one, yeah. and it was muddy and it was you know crazy because of the rain and it was not so organized as it could have been. Right, but it was fun. It was cool. I mean, it was still a clusterfuck. A lot of people fucking came in for free, much like our one of our smokeouts. I think our third smokeout. A lot of people like stormed the gates and. You know, where we sold 30,000 tickets, it was actually 60,000 people in there because, you know, the rest stormed the gates. Yeah. So the same shit sort of happened with, with Woodstock in in the second one where a lot of people sold tickets, but a fuckload stormed the gates. So they didn't make a lot of money in the second one. There, Although there was half a million people, they didn't make a lot of money. Um, So in the second one... <laughs> They decided they're going to try to make a lot of money, and it it was fucking a disaster. Really? Oh yeah. It, it check that check that out. It's called Trainwreck on on Netflix. Fuck, it, fuck. I'm gonna have to check. Definitely check that one out. Oh, you got to check it out, dude. When you look at it, you look at the promoters like, come on, man. Okay, I had Esteban Oreo here once again. Uh, much love, respect to Esteban. Esteban was here, My and big he was bro, yeah. He was actually promoting the Cypress Hill documentary, which I'll be honest with you. I've been knowing Mr. Cartoon since he's been a teenager. Yes, sir. I love the dude. I'm still trying to get him on here. Yes, sir. Uh, for, from the Rhodium days, you know. Um, I know Esteban did Mr. Car- uh, the, the whole Mr. Cartoon, the L.A. Originals. Yeah, the L.A. Originals. Dope ass documentary. Yes, sir. But if I had to choose, I like the Cypress Hill one better. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> he, that one was fucking dope, bro. Thank you. That one was fucking dope. I mean, you know, Stefan, because he was so close, there was no one yeah. better to tell that story, you know. And he had already like um, produced a bunch of, oh, and, and and directed a bunch of videos, and then he had done the LA original documentary, and so he got his feet wet, and he was already in. And we thought, like, there's no one better to tell our story because he's one of us. He's family. He's like literally one of us because, like, when Mugs and and um, Send Dog take their hiatus yeah. from Cyprus for that time, him and and Bobo are there with me the whole fucking time, and. And Esteban's wearing like a few hats, right? He's wearing the hat of the videographer, the photographer, the the um, the fucking road, road manager, manager. <laughs> and stage manager, and DJ. Like he's wearing all those fucking hats, yeah. and he's documenting all this while we're going. And uh, so we felt it would there was no better motherfucker to tell the story of Cypress Hill because he's as much a part of it as we were. Like yeah. we, we took yeah. it like Muggs originally placed him with, with house of pain. He wanted to place him with us first, but we didn't have a position available and we were only making so much money then. Right. So right. we're like, you know, Muggs was like, we got to put him with, with, with everlast in them. It would be a good connect and everlast being a smart dude that he is salute to my bro. Um, he said, yeah, hell yeah, let's bring on Estevan because he realized, you know, who Estevan right, was right. as a loyal soldier and, and all of that, right? So he brings on Estevan. And then something happens there, and we just happen to have a spot available now. So we bring Estevan on to, to do the work with us, and he stood with us for a good, I'm going to say, 12 years you know, of touring with us and going through all the highs and lows and the crazy, the yeah, crazy yeah, fucking yeah. times. I mean, that's that's a, that's my big bro. I mean, like this dude used to let me in clubs when I was like 16, 17 years old and he was the guy at the fucking door. Fuck. That's how far back we go. OK, OK. Uh, another question is favorite stoner movie. Um, any Cheech and Chong movie, you know, from still smoking to, to up and smoke and then half baked, half baked is pretty fucking funny okay. too. Up and smoke. Okay. Do you remember it was like, hijo de la chingada. What the fuck was in that when he's smoking fucking Lavador? Yeah. Okay. Here's the crazy part. 
I think this is what you mean by guide when you say somebody watching you. Remember when Chong goes, oh, oh shit, man. Yeah. He just took, and he goes, say, oh. oh yeah. We use that. <laughs> I know you've heard it. We use that totally, totally, totally. <laughs> On the Green Thumb Show, that is like a fucking thing, oh, bro. Fuck, bro. The like, ohms. Because that's a meditation. Yes. The yes. ohms is a meditation. I think it's a, it's a, is it a Buddhist meditation? Yes, yeah, a Buddhist okay. meditation. Okay. And, oh. and <laughs> we originally got it from the fucking Cheech and Chong movie. But I meditate. So like there was there was there was a time where I said, you know, like in the show, I think I think we need an ohm. Okay. And everybody was like, what the fuck you mean? I'm like, you know, like a meditation. And then we all snapped in. And then I have sound bites like on the instant replay. When I used to run it, I don't run it anymore. Right. We have our guy, Dominator, who right. does it. Um, but when we would do the ohms, I'd run the fucking Cheech and Chong ohms over the top of us doing ohms. Because, like, we were so sometimes chaotic and talking over each other. Because sometimes, you know, like... I did radio. Bobo did radio. Julio G did radio. Right, he right. sort of taught us. The okay. Baker boys and Julio sort of taught us right. how to do radio. And the one thing you don't do is talk over each other. Yes. It's sometimes when my guys that like were new to this would talk over each other, I think we need an ohm. And then we'd, we'd do the fucking ohm and I'd play the, the Cheech and Chong <laughs> ohm on top of it. And it became a thing. You know, and I meditate on the regular. That's something I just do. But like we incorporated on the show to be like, like to get us back centered, but also to be on some funny right, shit. Right. Okay. Um, this next one is somewhat of a controversial. And if you don't want to answer it, just say next question. It's all good. Let's go. Okay. I know he's your homie, but I have to ask you because lately he's been, he's been trending. Yes. George Lopez. George Lopez, yeah. The things that he's been saying lately. Yeah. Are you are you pretty much well informed of things that he's been saying? Uh, yeah, I've been I've been up on game okay. on on this to a degree. And I know how things could get misconstrued in terms of like you say something and you say it a certain way and it yeah. seems disrespectful. Yeah. And you know, I could see how that happened. Um, but with this way that, 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 that things are now, I mean, you sort of have to be, you know, in tune to that, yeah, yeah. you know? So like, if you're not really in tune to that, that it's like a, you're disconnected yeah. and maybe he was a little disconnected in, in terms of that. And he didn't like necessarily convey that, that shit properly because it seemed like a little haterish. Yeah. And and George is not necessarily a hater, but like, n never that I've seen. But, you know, other comics might say something different. And that's yeah. just the nature of comedy. Like, other yeah. motherfuckers be like very highly competitive, may say, right. like, hey, man, this motherfucker hates on us. Um, This isn't the first time. Yeah. And so, you know, you take that into account. And me being a friend of George, you know, I, I, I'm like supportive of him. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes. But I know how how things could go. Like it's a very competitive thing. Yeah. yeah. And you know, whether it's right or wrong, <laughs> I mean, I know what it's like. You know, to like for yeah. motherfuckers to shut you out because yeah. you know you may pose a threat to him, and in a lot of comics may have thought that about him like yo he shut me out because they fucking he posed I, I posed a threat to his position the way that you know he sort of said about eric estrada eric estrada wouldn't put any latino artists on he'd say fuck anybody else he you know he'd be like whatever yeah. and so now he's getting that sort of scrutiny and shit like that yeah. and it just happens but yeah. i know george and and he's a pretty supportive dude yeah. like i but as a comedian, I don't, I can't say in that world, you yeah. know, because I'm not a comedian and I haven't been hated on by him like that, you know what I mean? But okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I, I love George, man, and yeah. and I hope he can work his way through it. And you know, I know that he realizes he probably fucked up, yeah, Boom. yeah. in saying it the way he said it, because right. you don't want to dis discredit anybody coming up because you used to be the guy coming up, of course, of course. So hopefully, you know, like it was like. 
a miss a miscommunication. If it was yeah. like you know, then if it wasn't, let's just say it wasn't. Right. Boom. Um, he's got to look in the mirror and say yeah. that he was that guy at one point when he thought that about Eric Estrada. Right, right. You know what I mean? But if he, if it was a misconstrued thing, then, you know, he's right. got to figure out right. how he connects to people. Did and, you ever hear the Eric Estrada story? Yeah. That, that Sort of. Okay. Here's what he said. I thought this was like on some G shit if this was real, okay? You guys can look it up. Eric Estrada talks about George Lopez, whatever he is on Google. He said that uh, he confronted George. Okay, okay. And I don't even know if this even happened. It's just every, what Eric Estrada said. Right. He, that he confronted George and said, uh, hey, man, you know, I know I hear you saying that you came up to me and asked me for an autograph and I kind of like dissed you. Yeah. Whatever. He said, I don't remember doing that, but if I did, I'm sorry. That's what he said. He goes, if I did. And if he did that, that's dope. Yeah. He said, I'm sorry. He goes, but I really don't remember you know, you know, doing that. Yeah. He said, but and then he kept on and he kept on. He goes, and me being from Spanish Harlem, he goes, I, I got the same background that he, he's from. I'm a Latino. He's a Latino. So I told him, oh, like, okay, fuck it. You want to take a swing at me? It's going back at that fucking truck. <laughs> so this is what Eric Estrada said. You guys, go, yeah. yes, how do we say it in Spanish? Google it. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, so what happened was that George told him, I'm not a fighter. I'm a I'm a comedian. Yeah. And he said, "No, you're a you're a bully with a mic." Mm. Okay. So, like I said, George, I don't know if this is true. I'm just telling you what Eric Estrada what said. Eric said. Yeah. That's it. But uh, Eric Estrada, let me tell you something. Not people think he had it going on with chips, but he had it going on with fucking the, the uh, novelas. The novelas. What, what is it? Un camino. Yeah. Un camino he blew up mujeres. all over again. Hell yeah. He blew. Hey, listen. He blew up all over again with the novelas, and, and yes. then he, and then he started like fucking uh, promoting like fucking uh, timeshare spots after that. Yeah. yeah, who wants to buy swamp? Let's be honest. Yeah, <laughs> swamp shares. <laughs> he was fucking slaying his swamp shares after that, but that's because he was like doing so fucking dope yes. in the novela yes. fucking spot. Every guy wanted un camino, those mujeres. Every guy. He went okay. and brushed up on his Spanish, Papi. Yes. That's what happened. Yes. Be real. Do you know what today is? And we need to make this day an actual day here, at least here in LA. Okay. Yesterday was Valentine's Day. Right. El Dia de los Enamorados. But Blanca hit me with this. She goes, Do you know what the 15th is? And I was like, What? El Dia de la Sancha. <laughs> <laughs> the day after. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's almost like the morning after pill. So yes. The, day after. <laughs> the 15th, Dia de la Sancha. So, you know what? From here, we're going to start celebrating. Dia de la Sancha. Yeah. <laughs> it has a ring to it. It does. It, it does. Like, I saw a meme where a guy's on his knee, and he's telling the girl, would you be my Sancha? Oh, that my was- God. That's a great T-shirt. That would be a fucking dope T-shirt. I tell you, that would sell. Yes, it, it, yes I, I, I do believe it would sell. Okay, someone asked me to ask you this. Do you believe in a flat earth? No. Okay. Just but l- let me say this, though. Yeah, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Whether it's flat or round, I don't give two fucks. Because realistically, we're never going to get off of it. The regular folks, right? Regular right. folks are never going to get off it. Like, the way that they're, like, trying to, like, you know, get to the moon to for to be yes. a jump off to a new planet or to Mars to be a jump off to a new planet. Our generation will never see that. Right? right, generations after us may see that. Yes, yes. Um, so it it's not going to make a difference to me because I'll never get the invite from Elon Musk to to be like, "Yo, hey, do you want to see if this shit is round or if it's fucking on a platter?" Yeah, yeah. If he came to me, if Elon Musk came to me and said, "Hey, yo, be real, Doctor Greentham, I will take your ass up to show you that this shit is a globe," I would go. Hell yeah! If I thought if I was a flat earther or if I was a globist, which I'm neither, just like I'm not like I don't give a fuck about Democrat or Republican. I'm like I don't care. Yeah, you're either an elephant or a donkey. Yes, I'm here, and will I go up? Only when my soul leaves this fucking frame will I maybe see it. Right? Yes. 
Unless Elon Musk or dude from Virgin or anyone or Bezos comes and says, hey, yo, be real. I want to show you that we're on this or that. That's, you know, like, a, yeah. I don't give a fuck, yeah. to be honest. We're here, like, what, like whether it's round or, or it's on a flat shelf, who gives a fuck, right? If it's a flat shelf, show me where motherfuckers are falling off. Yeah, exactly. If it's, exactly. And, I, you know, if it's a globe, hey, this is what we were taught since we were kids. So, okay, yeah. this is a globe. I yeah. get it, rotation and gravity and all that. Because, like, if it was flat, somewhere, some... Some like um, thrill seeking motherfucker would fall off of it, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. A number of thrill seeking motherfuckers would fall off of it because accidents happen, right? So, where's the motherfucker that fell off the edge? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Where do you go? <laughs> but it doesn't matter to me. It, it, it really doesn't, okay. whether we're flat or, okay. or on a plate. I, I think we're, we're, we're like traditional, but you know, that's just an okay. opinion. Okay, now you. You knowing Joe Rogan, have you ever met Elon Musk? I've never met Elon Musk, but I seen when he when he went up there, okay, and he was talking to shit and he was smoking out. I thought that was yes. you know all right, cool. He smokes out, hell yeah. He okay. needs it. Okay, say he calls you up tomorrow. Yo, I'm gonna come on your podcast. He comes on your podcast. Okay, cool, whatever. Two questions, two very important questions. What would you think of asking him if there's any? Would you take me up? Okay, that's one. Oh, that's the one. And he goes, "Fuck yeah, let's go." On shrooms and weed. So, <laughs> and, oh and, man, he won up me with that yes, one. I yes. wouldn't know how to answer that shit. Oh, okay, that shit. so he says yes. Second question. Second question. Um, fuck, I don't know what the second question would be because do you know if there's other life? Yes, good question. Because people think he's a fucking alien. Yeah. Because yeah. realistically, yeah, you, you know, people think he's tapped in in a certain yeah, way. I yeah. would ask him this. Okay, okay. Would you come on my show would be the third question. <laughs> <laughs> do the smoke box, motherfucker. Would you do it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. You guys can Google it. Okay. Um, fuck. Okay. Google Elon Musk. Without a shirt. This guy, oh, fuck, I don't even know if I should even say He wanted way. to challenge Putin to a fucking fight. Okay, He's have ready. you seen Elon Musk without a shirt? You guys Google it right now. It's pretty, it, yeah. That shit looked like, if, if that's not an alien or a fucking, an abortion that lived, like <laughs> that shit, <laughs> he looks fucking horrible. I go, for having that much fucking money and looking like that. And a genius. You know, genius. he's cra genius. like a, a crazy genius. genius. Okay, here's a crazy one right here. I have to ask. Ask him if, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. Ask him if he's at Baba Lao or Baba yeah. Lu. Baba Lao. Baba Lao in Santa Rio. I am. Okay. Can you explain what that is? Cause I don't even know. what Baba, when I... I, I think Baba Lu because I'm thinking Desi Arnaz. It's it's a high priest okay. in 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 Santeria, right? There's the Santeros, which are like their priests, okay, right? And Santeras, priestesses, okay. Um, but like for certain ceremonies and certain rituals and okay. and um certain things, they need a a high priest, which is a Baba La, okay, which is uh from like Yoruba, in Africa. Oh, okay. Like in like Nigeria and right. different places uh, uh, in that that area. A uh -huh. lot of the shaman, a lot of the the people who practiced that initially were taken from there and brought, you know, to different places like the Caribbean and and even uh, you know Central and South America and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they had to hide it with Catholicism saints mm. and and which created santeria right. but it's really called ifa right and it's based off of yoruban you know um spirituality with divinities and stuff like that okay. that 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 help man that are from god essentially okay, okay. so um yeah i've been a, a practicing um priest for i'm gonna say since uh 2009 since then okay, okay. around when i started be real tv okay yeah, around that now, time. Now, now, when you became that, did um, 
Uh, did you believe in intelligent design that there is a God? Oh, yeah. You say? Okay. For sure, yeah. I was definitely like, um, I mean, you know, I was baptized Catholic. Um, then I became a Christian. And then I became a spiritualist. Okay. You know what I mean? Where I believe all, you know, spiritualism is linked to one. Whether okay. you believe in Islam or, or Christianity or Judaism or Hinduism or Buddhist, I think it's all one. Okay. We're all praying to the same God and there's a path to him okay. and to the, the kingdom of him or her. Right. However you, you know, however, however you, you receive don't want to offend nobody, so you got to say her. Right. So, like, for me, I, I accept all of them. I think they're all a path. Okay. Because, you know, God would definitely make different paths for you there because you might not understand one or the other right right you know what i mean so that that's the way i look at it so i try not to judge someone's path into okay. it okay um my next question is is there a a european i uh, guess uh, um i'm trying to mount cushmore Who, <laughs> of the weed stuff of the weed stuff who would you say like these motherfuckers can smoke. So if I'm excluding like myself and Snoop Dogg and Wiz and Burner. No, right? that's all of them then. Yeah, no. Okay. If, but but let, let, let me say like if I'm excluding us from yes. it, it would obviously be Bob Marley. Yes. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong? Yes, sir. Cab Calloway. And um, who else? Uh I guess I guess Willie Nelson and and Cheech and Chong. I mean, they would it would all it always always have to be that because, all right. So, Cab Calloway and Louis Armstrong they were big time cannabis advocates. Like so, Cab Calloway Cab Cab Calloway would hide cannabis references, and he was one of the ones that would be calling it reefer and things like this. And a lot of the jazz that was made in that time by Cab Calloway and artists that were influenced by him and whatnot, yeah, yeah, yeah. they were talking about cannabis, but talking about Reefer Man and this and that and the other, right? And so Louis Armstrong was also um, a cannabis user. Oh, shit. And he would say, you know, he'd rather have the rights to smoke cannabis than to own a gun. He, wow. he had both. Right, right, right. But he said if he had a choice, it would be cannabis over the right to own a fucking gun because he was a wow. weed head. So, okay, you know. Okay, let me see. Um, I want to get to one more question, and then I want to take calls. I got to take calls. I, I, even if we take five or six calls. Run it. Okay. <laughs> Fuck, we're almost going to be here three hours. That's, That's how, how we do. It's all, <laughs> it's all, as long as we're cool, it's bro. That's how we do. Okay. Uh. Do you remember the first time you got high? How old were you? I was probably like, um, I was probably like in the fifth, sixth grade. That 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 young? Yes, yes. I used to like. I listened to metal, so I had I had a lot of like a few homies that listened to metal okay, music. Give me a couple like Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Ozzy. ACDC, Rush, Ozzy Osbourne. Before I knew what Black Sabbath was, I knew what Ozzy was first. I learned about Black Sabbath after that, right? So, you know, those those groups and I had like a a group of homies that we'd all listen to this and we'd run around and we had an older homie. He was a gangster. Yeah. Right? And he was from this fucking neighborhood called East LA Tiny Dukes, right? in east la his name was eloy right and we would go to his crib after school and you know we'd fuck around with him and and listen to metal songs and some oldies and he would get us high off his little green acrylic bong hmm. and that was my first shit like right there i'd go home and my, and my mom would be like why are you so hungry after school why are you coming home so hungry <laughs> like fuck i don't know <laughs> i mean i wasn't gonna tell her and i didn't know the after effect you know i was just doing it with the older homie you know what i'm saying he was older than we were mm. you know i don't know how i can't remember how we knew him but one of the homies in our circle knew him and you know we, we go hang out with him after school and fucking come home i'd be hungry as a motherfucker bro <laughs> okay you know what's funny i shaved today 
about an hour before we started this episode. And I'm already feeling like my hair growing back. Yeah, I feel it too. I did the same thing. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I don't know why. That's that older man shit. (laughs) (laughs) That's that older guy shit, dog. We grow it faster. It just comes, dog. Did you ever sell weed as a kid? I did for a second. For real? Yeah, yeah, for a second I did. I like, okay, so my first, one of my, (laughs) one of my first. Pete, do dime bags still exist or no? No. Okay, okay. I have, that's what all I remember. If you're you. giving somebody something, maybe, but nah, they don't exist anymore. But like my first experiences were like, okay, so my my um my mother who came from Cuba, uh-huh. she came here in '68, right? I was born that, yeah, Hell. right on. She she came in '68. She was very young, but she had a niece that was here that came with another family. Okay, right in Cuba, they got a lottery. Right, and your kids are the lottery numbers in this lottery. And if your kid's number gets popped up in the lottery, if if, if that, that number comes up, you have the option to leave Cuba. Wow. If you leave, you leave with all your credentials. I mean, you leave without your credentials, and you leave with only the shit you could take with you, which shouldn't be much. Right, right. And <clears throat> for some reason, my aunt sent... um one of my cousins with this family whose daughter had died, wow. right? And when they do census, it wasn't like fucking spot on. So they didn't know, right? Like they didn't come to every family. Hey, what's what's your family looking like? They didn't know that the family's daughter had passed away that lived next to, to my mother's family. So one of my aunts sent off, knowing that it was about to become a communist country. She yeah. sends my one of my cousins with this family who's like a friend of the family since, you know, way back. Yeah, so yeah. she comes to the country first. My, my, my mother's niece comes to the country first. So when my mother escapes and they, you know, she has to go through all the, the shit. This is the only person she knows here. So she references, you know, I have a niece here and blah, blah, blah. So that was like her introduction into the country was like through my, through my cousin, my first cousin. And, you know, that's, that's how my mother got here. Yeah. yeah, You know, like through the escape, she had that one. Like, so when she claimed asylum and like, do you know anybody here? She says, yes, my niece is here. And, and her and my niece, uh, her and her niece were around the same age. Okay. So my first cousin was just like maybe a year or two, mm-hmm. like within her age, maybe, maybe a year older or something like that. So that's, that's, that was my mother's introduction into the country. She came straight from Cuba okay. through escape. And yeah, cousin was here through that lottery system. That's how Sendog and his family got here. Yes, through that lottery shit. Through yeah. that lottery system. I think it was Mello's number that popped up that allowed them to come to the United States. Right. But you give up everything. So if you're a professor, doctor, scientist, anything, you don't get to bring that with you and get a job here in that field. Right. You have to start the fuck over. You know, B, if you look at it, think about the sense lottery number comes up. Your mom's lottery number comes up. Yeah. And you guys come here and phone Cypress Hill. Yeah. You know, the thing with the, the, the funny thing is that my mother, she escaped. She didn't get the lottery number or okay. nothing like that. Her family didn't get that. Her niece did. Okay. So she had a connection here, right? That was big because she wouldn't have tried to come here if, if, if her niece wasn't here. Yes, yes. And yeah. send dog and them like uh, through Mello's lottery number yeah. get here. And then like who knew that yeah. like my mother and, and their family comes from the fucking same place. And then we would end up linking and doing something yes. as big as, as what we've done. with. Uh, yeah, that's why I don't believe there's any coincidences. No, it's God not. works in crazy ways. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he he definitely blessed us in 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 how we connected. Because I, I listen, I learned my spirituality from Send Dog's mother. She taught me Nieves? about yes, Nieves Reyes, rest in peace. Rest she just peace. passed away not long ago, but she she taught me about faith. 
right? She told me one day that it was a funny thing where she was asking me about how things are going with Cyprus and the group because we were doing promo stuff and, and shit like this, right? And she goes, how's everything going? And I said, ah, oh, things are going good. We're doing the promo stuff and we're doing this and that. I hope that it eventually fucking does this or that. And she goes, don't hope. Have faith. Hope is not faith. Faith is stronger. Know that you're going to do this and that. See it. That's believe beautiful. it. Yeah. And fuck, from that, like, that opened my eyes to everything. I was like, you know what? If this is right for me, it's going to happen. If it's not right for me, I got to accept that and keep it pushing and go in a different direction. But, like, I had faith that this was it. And that was through that conversation. That's awesome. That's awesome. Rest in peace, sir. Rest in peace. Okay. Uh, now, here's another one. Uh, first time, because I know you smoke joints, blunts, etc. First time you took a dab. Oh, man. First time I took a dab Do you was, remember what year? Yes. Uh, well, it's a little blurry now, but it, I, I'm going to say it was, uh, fuck, when was it that dabs came in heavy? It was about, I'm going to say six, seven years ago. Okay. We were doing a 420 show in Denver. And I haven't really done crazy dabs yet. I've like I had fucked with it a little bit, but the Weed Maps homies come up to you know to the to the 420 show in Denver, yeah, and they're like you know it's like a fucking squad of them. They all got their dab rigs, they got their torches, they got their fucking their concentrates and all the things right. And like we want to like blaze up with 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 be real, and so we oblige them. We're like, all right, let's go. And I figure I got a lot of tolerance, so let's let's do this, right? So <laughs> they hit me with, and this was before dabs were cleaner, and and people were doing what what they call low temp dabs, which means let's heat the nail, and after it's red hot, let's let it let's let it cool off for about forty seconds, thirty yes. seconds, or whatever, right? That's a low temp dab. This is before anybody was doing that. Everybody was doing a hot dab, and so. They just, okay, they load me up one. They all do one. Then they load up the second one. I do it. They do it. They ask, hey, do you want a third? And I'm like, all right, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, I'm like taking it like it's bong hits, whatever, because I'm not feeling it yet. Okay. And then after the third one, you know, everybody hits it. And then, like, now I'm, like, feeling it. I'm like feeling it in a different way because it was all hot dabs. It wasn't like the low temp timed out where it tastes good and it's not devastating. This was the devastator type of shit, right? So within like, I'm going to say 20, 30 minutes, I, I, I call my homie at the time, Ennis. And I tell him, hey, man, get everybody the fuck out of here. I need 45 minutes to my head, all right? You still had a show. And I still had a show that night. And so, like, I snap out of it within 45 minutes. I just meditate out of it. It took me some time because I was, like, high as fuck. High, higher than I ever been, even the first time I got high in my fucking life. It was, like, up there, right? But I, I snapped myself out of it, but I'm still feeling, like, the residual, right? Because we got a show. Right, right. And we right. do the show. The other guys that were with us that day that took the three hits or four, whatever it was, they didn't show up to the show. They were done. They yeah. stood home. They went to they sleep. They were trying to outdo you. That's what they were does. trying to outdo me. And by like trying to outdo me, they outdid themselves because I still yeah. had to do the yeah. show. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, B, I, B, I, hold on. I got to tell you something. This guy right here that runs my shit, he thinks, Alex, he thinks he can outdo you. A lot of people think yeah. they can now do it. That's why he was always sound like a fucking scuba diver with that fucking bong, okay? So he thinks, like, I'll take him on, okay? Uh, uh, you know, okay. A, lot, a lot of people have t taken, yeah. well, yeah, they've tried. To, you can, can, can you, can you out, out smoke Snoop? Oh, yeah. Can you out smoke Wiz Khalifa? He's harder, Hard, you know, because, look, Snoop smokes a lot. Yeah. He smokes a lot. Let me just say that off the top. He smokes probably more yeah. than a lot of motherfuckers that, that, that I know, but he just smokes blunts. Okay. You know what I mean? And guys like myself and Wiz and guys like us, 
we sm- we do it all we do the we smoke the joints we do the edibles we don't smoke blunts because blunts are too harsh but okay we do the dabs we do like the 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 full spectrum oils the rso okay we do all that shit and that's just a different level you know that's okay. like fucking beast like shit right so wiz and and some of his squad they do that like i do you know what i mean so i could definitely say that yeah wiz got those wings like that okay and snoop can definitely get high but he's not like the 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 the, the full full spectrum full wow. spectrum stoner where he's doing edibles and doing dabs and and doing all that shit like okay. he smokes the blunts he might do it an edible here and there but what other rapper out there would you say burner he can hang with you yeah burner can hang with the smoke for sure um with the edibles um i never seen him really do so many edibles but he's gotten into doing like the the the, the concentrates as of late okay and that's that's good for for what some of the stuff he needs to be doing yeah um so yeah he could definitely hang my man could definitely he can hang in a smoke circle for sure okay uh real quick because one of my boys wanted to cook it just text me and uh (laughs) before i pass them around do you want one i'll try one shit i'm a stoner try the chocolate chip they're in the back they're in the okay i see them in the back boom from the back i see it oh damn that's a I think one of the first That's ones. like a fucking UFO chocolate chip yeah, right I'm there. Gonna try, uh, I'm going to try this one. You pass them around. Though. But they're not edible, right? No, they're, no, they're not. They're not. I, oh, I would not. Cookies. That's good. Cookies. Yeah. Let me give a plug to once again to a nacho granish cookies, and I'm going to open it this way. And I guess it's... Is that a fucking marshmallow? I think it's a marshmallow. Oh, my God. Yeah. So... All right. All of a sudden, I got the fucking munchies like a <laughs> motherfucker, bro. <laughs> I'm fine. Concentrate, contact. Mm-hmm. It's real. Okay. My wife be trying to say it's not real, but it's real. No, it's fucking real. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure, bro. So you don't want a beer or a cookie? Okay, there you go. <laughs> Alex, go ahead. Do me a favor right now. Put the number up. Let's hit some phone calls and let's hit some phone calls. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> this shit is good. Hey, uh, Norbert, yeah. give me a, a napkin, por favor. Okay. No, natural grand cookies. Make sure you guys follow her. We put her on the um on the live chat. That. The, okay. They're nice and thick, just like Oh, yeah. Me. Yeah, exactly. Robust. There you go. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, B, you're going to have to um, put these headphones on. All right. And then we're going to take a, just just a couple of phone calls. Okay. Let's go. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Salvador in Sacramento. Salvador from Sacramento. What's good, my brother? You got a question for B-Roll? I do, yeah. I just want to say shout out, both of you fellas. Um, shout out, B-Roll. Been a fan since like 10, 12 years old when you guys dropped the Four album. I think it was about 98. Yep. And um, I just, you know, I, I've followed you guys since then, since being a kid, and I've always been a fan. And it's just, it's man, I'm humbled to be in your presence at this point, man. Big salute to you, brother. Um, first hip hop group to have a Hollywood star, you know, um, a few nominated Grammy awards, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, correct. Yeah. Um, and just, I mean, you know, godfathers of West coast rap basically. So, um, just thank you for everything you do for the community, bro. Be real. What is your vision for the future of hip hop? Um, what do you see in the future? for the hip hop game, for the lyricist game, for the rap game, whatever we want to call it. Right. I think, um, artists are stepping it up verbally, you know, and lyrically, like you look at guys like Kendrick Lamar and he's doing some incredible things. 
if when you think about how other artists are are inspired by by artists before them, he's the guy that people are looking at right now, like young artists, and you know that makes people step up. And so I look at at, at things like that, man. I, I think there's a, a a great direction that 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 cats could be going in as as guys like him and Jay Cole and 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 people in in their generation doing this this right now and inspiring people so i think it's in good hands i think it's in good hands and and, but but like in any generation of hip-hop you know you have your positive and negative shit stuff that's really good and stuff that's like mediocre and like what the fuck is this on Mm -hmm. um there's always going to be right a dosage of that and and if you and if you know that you take everything with a grain of salt right and and um when when so, when a gem comes, you know how to appreciate it. That's dope. That's dope. Be real. I am so nervous. I'm talking to you right now, bro. Like, that's <laughs> me too. Yo. <laughs> All good, my brother. Thank you, bro. Gracias, you guys. Thanks, bro. Gracias. My both for Sacramento. Let's get the calls coming. Let's go. Call in your name and where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Tony? A? This is Papa Luna from the 805. What's up, my brother from the 805? You got a question for B-Roll? Uh, not much, not much, man. I was timing this shit perfectly to try to get in on this. But uh, one big salute to be real Thank you, bro. Just like the last caller, like Matt. Uh, it's crazy just to be on the phone line with you. Hey, but I have my bong packed right here on the side, so I'm going to take a bong here really quick. Is that All right. Me? Hell Before yeah. I can smoke with uh, Tony A. Go All right, it. I'm going to get this really quick, and then give me a second because I got something to say really quick. Hit that motherfucker. Let me hear that shit, bro. Hell yeah, yeah. Shout out to be real type of still. Hey, first off as well, too, I would like to give a thought to my homie Wacko from the city of Santa Paula. Um, he was always spinning techniques, bro, from like the early 90s. Um, uh-huh. And I really just wanted to take a bong hit with you and just give you your pop type of still. I'm right here in the garage chilling with my wife. We just ate some tacos. That's what's up. Some fucking tall cans. Just take <laughs> a bong hit. Fuck um, Tony A, like I always say. Salute to everybody for always standing up and, and, and being real, right? That's no right. Intended or kind of, uh, yeah. Hey, I just want to take a bong here with you, type of feel, and uh, say thank you. You know what I'm saying? Thank um, you, bro. I'm 40 years old, and again, a little starstruck, and I've never really been like this, but um, I really appreciate. I listen to your podcast just as much as any other one. Um, being 40 years old, I watch more YouTube than I do actually like television. Besides, like the news, and um, you know. Uh, it's just really dope to be where we come from, you know, our day and age where we grew up in the 90s into 2000s and here we are in fucking 2023. Um, it's just really dope, bro, and I just really want to take a bond here with you, man. Hey, Luke, thank, you. thank you guys for fucking making it um, worth the fight type of deal, you know, and I hope everybody just be true to themselves. And uh, what was it that you said if you had one thing to say, if you had the world in your hands during the podcast right now? You said... uh Fuck, what did I remember, say? Uh, I'll be real. <laughs> act right. Act right. <laughs> act right. <laughs> yeah, act right. Something like that. You know what I'm saying? But for real though, man, like, hey, it, fuck, it, it, it was really dope. I really had my bong right here. I just really wanted to get in and just take a bong in with you and give a salute to my ho- uh, my homie uh, Wacko from Santa Paula. Um, like I said, that he was pushing techniques in his fucking shopping cart, bro, going to ditching party, to ditching party, and Today, people don't know about ditching parties and fucking, you know what I mean? That's Bring right. Someone's house when they're parenting. I'm so saying. cow thing um, right there, so bro. Yeah, salute. <laughs> Thanks, bro. You guys have a good night. Hey, and fuck all the weird ass callers, bro. The fucking in here. There's some weird ass shit right here on 28. All good, my bro. That's right. You stay blessed, homie. Here we go. Here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Hey, yo, Tony. This is AP from BP back in the phone line once again. I got a few questions for Dr. Green Thumb. Yes, sir. Um, I got three questions. One, are we going to get another album with Sick Jackin? It's always possible. Him and I always talk about working together. We have like a, this, okay. this dope connection whenever we do a project, whether it's like a Psycho Realm thing or just like even a song. Um we're able to always snap in so it's possible okay yeah because 
that first cycle wrong album that's one of my favorite fucking albums no thank disrespect you. to your line of work but you know you were a part of that thank it, you thank you it's an underground classic yep mm -hmm. and then um the second question is uh are you guys gonna do anything for the 30th anniversary of black sunday yeah actually we're we're planning on on doing like a symphony performance that we do in uh it starts in in denver colorado and we hope to do it here in los angeles too but like doing like black sunday with the symphony and uh okay. we we discussed it a long time ago you know even before you know Wu did it their their first time mm -hmm. it was something mugs brought up and then somehow it you know <laughs> somehow they they got to it first but um it was something that we always thought about like doing uh -huh. and um finally we're about to do it for our 30 year anniversary and i think it's gonna be dope man the way yeah. the, the way that we got it crafted it's gonna be pretty awesome so we're gonna start in denver and we're gonna try to bring it here to los angeles all good cool i can't wait for that so actually just one more thing i just want to it's not a question it's more of a fun fact that i'd like to share with you let's go um do you um do you remember mono esteban told me who say his mono. name again mon mono, as well. mono mono yeah 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 hell yeah i remember mono so rest in peace man yeah that, that was my cousin man oh man he was a good dude. Um, yeah, we were doing. I never it. got to. I never got to meet him because, unfortunately, he passed away before I was born. But yeah, I kind of like to share that to like all the like, I guess associates like yeah. Soul Assassin, Cypher Two, Cypher Realm, like that whole thing. I like to share that because I was pretty shocked when I found out like, like that was my cousin and like he was affiliated with you guys. Yeah, he was a real dude. He was a real dude. He ran the streets. Um, he was 100% real and, um, he actually was, yeah. a, he, he actually did a movie, a movie, um, that, that we did based off of, um, these homies that, that, that were in Echo Park. I can't remember the name of the movie exactly, but this dude named B Billy Worth put the movie together and it was based off of like two, three gangs that ran Echo Park or not Echo Park, um, MacArthur Park. I think okay. that's what it was called, MacArthur yeah. Park. And um I play one of the guys in in MacArthur Park in Mono, his his uh his uncle, yeah. right? Is it uncle or cousin or relative? Um he, he plays one uh, of my cousin. His co cousin. Yeah, his cousin. He plays he plays one of my guys in this movie. And uh, you know, we oh, did shit. that and we did that right before he passed away. Oh, okay. Yeah. That'll work. Oh wow! I never knew that either. Yeah, Thank yeah, he you. was in that movie. He was in that movie with me, MacArthur Park, I believe it's called. Look it up; you'll see him in there. I gotta, I gotta find that. He's probably under his real name. Yeah, I don't think he's under Mono when they when they credit him, but like yeah. he's definitely in that. Right. All good, caller. Thank you, caller. Thank you for being a part of the show tonight, bro. Appreciate you, homie. Thank you, Tony. You got it. All right, let's go. Let's go to the next caller. Let's see. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Call her. Hello? Yeah. Your name or where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Edward. I'm calling from Fresno, California. What's up, bro? First off, I want to say my to you, Tony Gay, and uh, thank you, my bro. Be real, man. Much love, man. Uh, it's a pleasure calling and shit. Thank you, bro. But, um, I just want to say, bro, uh, uh, be real. What, what's your thoughts on, um, on, um, as far as North and South being segregated by a certain city and Northerners being segregated by the Palmetto? Like, I mean, do you think like that, that segregates, segregates Hinton? I mean, I try not to get involved with with those politics, but realistically, we should all be together. Yeah. You know, we're 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 all yeah. in the same the same state, same same region. 
and we go through the same struggles, maybe on different soil, but you know, we're all the same. And and to be like fucking with each other is kind of crazy. But, you know, I try not to get involved with those politics because it's deeper than than anything that I could think of or any of us that are right here on the streets. Because, you know, the homies that, that make those rules, they're locked up. And unless you're in that world to know it, you know, you can't really right. you can't really absorb those politics and, and, and yeah. understand it in the, in the way that they can. So you can't really judge it. You wish as someone outside of it that that it could get together and, and motherfuckers could roll together as as a people because we're we're pretty much all the same. Yeah. All good. And hopefully they yeah, get to I mean, a, if hopefully it'll get to a point like that. Cuz we're all here in California. Yeah. And we're all, you know, we're we're all from that particular bloodline. <laughs> yeah. So. Exactly. It's pretty fucking ridiculous that we're like, you know, always looking at each other sideways. We shouldn't. Absolutely. All right, caller. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Appreciate you, homie. Thank you very much, brother. All right. All right, let's go. Caller, let's keep you pushing. We can take a couple more phone calls and then it's a wrap. Let's go. Uh, caller, your name or where are you calling from? Hello, Tony. So be real. What's it's up, bro? Brad Tipple. Coming from South Central LA, I'm coming from the the higher potency crew. That's right. But um, I want to ask to be real. Hey, um, what two strains would you would you cross this, uh, out of all of them in, in the world? Whether they're OG, Indicas, or Sativa. And the second one is um, is Dr. Green some hiring for for anyone for growers? Uh, so what or strains anything. would I cross? Or, or even I'll, I'll come and sweep your floors. <laughs> word up so what strains would i cross fuck that's yeah. a good question um i would cross maybe the mac 11 with um yeah. or people call it the mac one too i would i would cross the mac one with um any form of gelato because i totally, really like totally. the mac one and i like gelato that would be good and what was the totally. other question is um is Dr. Green some hiring for for any growers or, or even a janitor position? <laughs> I would like to learn. Well, look, I would like to learn from the best. So here's the thing, right? Like we're 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 going to be yeah. opening up some new Dr. Green Thumb stores, and we're going to be shutting down a couple. We just shut down our Silmar store not mm. too long ago, but we're going to replace the location with a better location and uh, with the better operational plan. And the same thing with um with our Los Angeles location, our downtown Los Angeles no location, uh, people probably saw, maybe saw that today, if they went down there today, that our, our sign maybe have, it was gone. That's because our, our deal, our, our licensing deal with that location has uh, terminated, and we decided that, you know, we're going to find another place. Okay. And and open up uh, right. somewhere else because realistically, when you when you choose partners, you want to see sort of the same vision in terms of where you want to take the place and how it should operate, how it should deal with the consumers and stuff like that. And sometimes you don't see see eye to eye. Sometimes different ideologies happen, and when you can't agree on one, yes. you have to agree to you know go separate ways. So. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, we, we resolved everything amicably and, and, you know, we're going to go in a different direction, but we're going to have some really dope locations coming. And we're excited about some of the stuff that's Hell about yeah. to pop off. So um, that, yeah. that happens in this industry, though. You know, like Cookies even went through some, right. some things like that where they opened up some locations, had to close them back down and, and relocate and do some different things because... You know the the operation ideology is just different. Yeah, yeah. How how many dispensaries do we have right now? Um, it was six. Okay. Right now we're 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 about to be at four. Okay. But within maybe six months to eight months time, it's about to ramp back up to about seven and eight. That's dope. And probably above that because we're we're looking at deals in Florida, New York, and and uh, Michigan and stuff like that. So Hell we're looking yeah. trying to get out of the state and. Oh, yeah. And like you know, expand for real. Oh yeah.
Thank you, caller. Appreciate you, homie. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Good All night. Right. Thank you. Let's go. We're going to take about two more phone calls, and then we should be done. So call in. Call in your name, and where are you calling from? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Pablo Escobar from Covina. Fuck. <laughs> Pablo Escobar, you made it, bro. This, B, this is Pablo Escobar. Oh, hold on, pal. Pablo Escobar slash Ron Jeremy. All right. Pablo Go for it, bro. Pablo Jeremy? Uh, yes. <laughs> hey, uh, what's going on, man? Uh, you guys work in the, you know, in the, in the industry where you have a bunch of women getting passed around. Uh, you know, you, you know, like, for example, uh, the Kardashians, J-Lo, you know, Club Daddy, uh, all these women, all these, you know, right. Marilyn Monroe, okay. uh, uh, Carmen Alexa, uh, uh, what do you think about these ladies just going doing all that like Dennis Rodman and all that stuff? Is that is that is that a real thing or is that a conspiracy theory? All these women just having sex with a bunch of basketball players and stuff. Um, I didn't understand that part. Yeah, say it again. Say that again. Yeah, what do you think about all these women? Like every decade, you have a, these women. They all do is sleep around with a bunch of bottles. <laughs> you know, like like Cameron Electra. Right. You know, he, she was all over Dennis Rodman. Then she went and married the, the Latino vato. Oh, no, Navarro. Is that, is that true? Okay, well, let me... Like, I, I, like I, Gelo, I, you know... I, I, I think, yeah, I think that happened. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it happened. You I seen know. it, I seen it, we all He's seen it. He's packing down a bunch of Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, rich and famous, you know, they go to Jeffrey, Jeff, you know, like, uh, SC Island to do all their dirty stuff, but sometimes they're out in the open, like J-Lo, you know, like these ladies. You know, there's nothing wrong with these people, you know. Hey, Half people, the football team. Hey, pe but, people got freaky uh, tails, bro. You think, <laughs> freaky tails. You think that is true? And then did you, did you ever catch some of that? Did I catch some freakiness? Hey, man, look in in the in the music industry. Hell yeah, there's a lot of freakiness, mm -hmm. a lot of freaky tails. I can't tell you any right now, but yeah, there's plenty. Yeah. Ron Jeremy, thank you, bro. <laughs> I know you beat your case <laughs> because uh, you got dementia. So hey, uh, you want to know some crazy shit? I have about, multiple personalities. Uh, hey, sorry tell you, about that. Let me, let me tell hold you on, hold on. Let hold me on, tell Ron. you something about Ron. Go ahead. <laughs> so, well, we're doing the Soul Assassins show, Bobo and I, right? Bobo and I used to do a um a, the Soul Assassins radio show. Yeah. On ninety two point three, the beat before it was um Soul Assassins on Shade forty five. Some years before that, right? It was like. 96 97 okay. in in right around that time it <laughs> we used to have a lot of porn stars come no and shit. do the show with us you know like special guests right and we had ron jeremy come through and we did his little interview on 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 the show and after the show so you know we ended the show we're like outside and we're hanging out with ron and alicia class who was our co-host who was also a porn star okay she was known for taking it in the ass better than any other, any other that, that star, was yeah. her thing and so we were outside talking with them before we you know like got the fuck out of there and bobo was telling the story to ron jeremy about how like the first porno he had ever seen was a ron jeremy porno and he was explaining it to him and he was going into this crazy ass detail like yeah you know i saw this movie and when you did this and this and that and i was listening to bobo and how passionate he was in telling the story i look over and ron was fucking asleep he was asleep narcolepsy style like asleep and i like i i nudged bobo i'm like <laughs> bobo was like fuck yeah, total fucking Z's cracking. Because Bobo, you know, like, you know how sometimes when you tell a story, you look to the ground and you're like trying to recall. You're not doing eye contact. You're trying to recall the story. Right, right, right. And remember right. all the little bits and pieces. And while he was doing this, fucking Ron Jeremy fell asleep on him outside on the street, wow. leaning against the car. This shit was the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. Okay, uh, Ron Jeremy, hold on real quick. I'm going to tell you my story. About three years ago, right pre-pandemic, I was in Denver, Colorado, and I was DJing. I was right in the middle of a motherfucking blend of a mix. All of a sudden, <laughs> okay, and I always wore one headphone because I had to hear the monitor and I had to hear the headphones. Right. So I'm over here mixing motherfuckers like this three times. 
And I finally said, what, motherfucker? And it was Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. This guy was wearing, like, skinny sweats. <laughs> skinny sweats. And he had camel toe. I don't know how he had camel toe, but he had camel toe. Yeah. And then he had Crocs barefoot. Yeah, So yeah. I know that shit was stinking. He was also always violating the codes. Yeah, yes. Okay. So then I go, what do you want? He goes, um, I'm on a, uh, uh, what do you say, a strip club. He goes, I'm on a strip club tour, and we're going hitting up all the clubs to try to get people to come to our shit. Right. So I was like, talk to the promoter. Talk to the promoter, give him the fucking mic, and he comes back goes, Thanks, man. If you want to come in, I'll get you in free. And I was like, I'm good, bro. Hey, you know, it, it's it's crazy because he would always invite me. He was always nice to me. Yes. You yes. know, like he whatever he did, he did. And he got to deal with that. But like he was always nice to me and he was always inviting me to um, judge the Tropicana bikini Shit. deals. And I would always have to be like, ah, oh, man, you know, fuck, I'm on tour. I can't. Tropicana was a shit. Yeah, I back could not, I could not do it though. Like I I would always have to turn him down and he would always wonder why it, like everybody else would go with him. Right. I would be the one like the one motherfucker to turn him down and I was like, "No, nah, I can't. I I just can't do it." <laughs> and that like now I thought I realized after all the shit, I'm like, "No, nah, I'm glad I, I I didn't do it." Bro, the Tropicana fuck he brought. That was like right off the freeway. You could see that motherfucker. Right oh there. yeah. Pfft, yeah. Crazy. Boom. Okay, hey, Ron Jeremy, I mean, uh, fucking Pablo Escobar. Thank you, bro. Pablo Ron. Oh, yeah. Ron Pablo. By the way, I'm innocent. That's actually. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Pablo. That's a oh, good. I'm, oh, I'm, that's, I'm a good go. that's a good name, Ron Pablo. Hey, Ron Pablo. Ron Pablo. Okay, we're going to take one more call. Let's see who's the last caller. <laughs> Whoever calls gets a teddy bear shaped like Nor Norbert right here. <laughs> and uh, we'll mail it out to you tomorrow. Caller, your name, or where are you calling from? This is Big Bravo, Thousand Oaks. Big Rob. Just want to give a big shout out to my man, B Real. Thank I used to kick him with, kick him with him back in the day at the Rainbow Room. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, Big Marv, Ennis. That's right. Uh, all our good buds. Fucking Dougie. Uh, Shalom. Uh, Fred. Everybody. All the good people. All the homies, yeah. Legendary town smoking and talking. Salute uh, to you, man. Just big shout out, man, from, from the Kirch House Records. Back in the day, you know, do we? I, I see you doing a lot of good stuff now. You always keep doing it, B. Thank keep you, up sir. the good stuff, man. I see you at the haunted, the haunted hill. Took my daughter over there. Brilliant, brother. Hell yeah! Thank Watch you very up. much, man. And we'll be like, you know, doing that haunted hill again this October, man. We're gonna rock it. I love it. I love it. Thank yeah, you, let's bro. Let's get every last one of time. Let's make sure he shows up. That's right. He's That's he's fun. gonna be there at this one. We're gonna make sure about that. All good. Thank All you, my bro. All right. All right, let's go ahead. That, that was it. You know what? That haunted hill shit. My, if you had a favorite holiday, what's your favorite holiday? Mine's Halloween. Halloween's good, you know, because um, it's not like all the traditional shit, right? You know what I mean? Um, the people get a chance to be like different that day. So right, it's, right. It, and it's a fun. It's a fun holiday, and we always like. Rock shows in New York, which is one of the craziest places to be yes, in Halloween, yes, yes. man. It's it's nuts. The New York crowds are crazy and shit. So, um, but it's it's also good to do the shows here. Like we got the chance to do the Palladium here this time around with Fishbone, who we grew up watching. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Everlast was supposed to do this one. He didn't get a chance to do it because he got COVID and stuff like that. But we're gonna to try to get him on for this year and 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 rock it again because the Palladium was 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 knocking. It was a it was a really good show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, dope, dope. Okay, um, I'm still getting fucking. Stop calling no more calls. Okay, <laughs> but um, okay. My, my thing is this: B, what can people expect from B Real Cypress Hill Doctor Green Thumb 2023? We're barely in February. Any new music coming out from Cypress Hill, or is it just B Real solo? Well, with Cyprus, we're going to be putting out some music. You know, Muggs and, and myself, we have uh, done a couple things and stuff like that that we're like, you know, sort of working out. And Send Dog will eventually get on, on some of the stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, we're always going to do new style of music with Cypress Hill. And for me, you know, I got some projects coming out with Burner. We did out another album, uh, Prohibition album. Well, it's not called Prohibition, but people have always called our shit the Prohibition. 
okay. albums because that's what our first few were called. Um, but him and I got an album with Scott Storch that we worked on, so that's coming. Um, but before that, the one I did with Psycho Less, this one's like crazy and it's oh, awesome yeah. hip hop shit. Psycho Less produced all of it and he spit on it with me. Um, so that's coming. And then like a bunch of like just songs I'm going to be working on on shit just to like, you know, hit people with different shit and different projects like that musically. You know what I mean? Like okay. just uh different pieces of of and facets of what what we do musically you know what i mean whether it's latino shit in spanish or it's traditional hip-hop or even fucking with like some new style shit like you know going back to that hard heavy style yeah, yeah, type yeah. of thing so yeah. you know because the thing we did with nascar was 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 crazy you know like when when they asked us to do nascar i was like well you know we're gonna do four songs one of them has to be rock superstar and if we're gonna play that we gotta play it right so that meant like getting the right guitar player and stefan carpenter from the deftones yes. bass player shavo uh from the deftones keyboard money mike from the Be money mark from the beastie boys and you know with bobo and and sending myself and dj lord snapping it with them yeah. We we're gonna present that shit and when we did that we found that we had a vibe like there's a vibe there's a chemistry and so we're gonna build off that so along with the yeah. other cypress hill shit and my solo shit people got that to look forward to because we're gonna fucking definitely build off fuck that. yeah fuck yeah that shit is dope that shit is real fucking dope okay other than that b is there anything you want to bring up anything you want to promote anything you want to share whatever the floor I, is yours. I just want to say, man, you know, like the, the positivity you be sharing here, man, that's everything. Like the take care of yourself and the fitness and the diet yes. and the love yourself theme, you know, because people yes. forget to do that, right? You know, people be shitting on themselves before they celebrate themselves. Like, you know, like telling yourself, you know, like that shit you see in movies, right? Oh, man, I ain't shit. I ain't ever going to be shit. If if you tell yourself that that's the road you're on and, and, and you are going to manifest that. So you got to tell yourself something different. You got to tell yourself, I am the shit. Instead of I ain't shit. Yeah. I am the shit. You know what I mean? And motherfuckers right. are going to fuck with me. And I'm going to open doors and I'm going to create this opportunity. I'm going to be in this positive space. And if you think that and you say that to yourself and you could see it and you believe it you could live that you can do it most people you know they don't believe in the power of manifestation because they never witnessed it but like if they said it to themselves and they and they concentrated on it they would see it so like i'm about that spreading that sort of energies yeah that type of vibe so like if you're down on yourself and you're constantly shitting on yourself man that's bad for your your spiritual diet celebrate yourself give yourself a break you know say hey you know i made a mistake but i'm human i'm gonna do better i'm gonna fucking try to be better yeah you yeah, know what i mean and, and and say i am better right because it's about what you tell yourself you know what i'm saying it, okay. it, it's it's all about that and i believe that if you tell yourself something better and your 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 mental and subconscious diet you will do better okay okay one last thing that I'm going to ask, because I know this is one thing. I mean, I could talk about rap, but I kind of want to stray away from that during this in it, well, this conversation. Right now, the thing that's in is a lot of podcasting. Right. Okay, so. Oh, man, left and right. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to ask you, if there's someone out there thinking about podcasting, how do I go about it? What type of encouragement would you give them for somebody that wants to start up their own podcast? Well, you know, like, be original, be you. Yes. Be you more than anything. You know, you could be inspired by somebody. Um, take that and be you. Find what's what's you about that and, and 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 unleash yourself into the world instead of trying to be what somebody else is because then you're just a cookie cutter mm -hmm. of someone else. And you yes. all and there's always something interesting about you that's 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 different than anyone yes. else. You know what I mean? Okay. So I would I would concentrate on that and and try not to do what everybody else might be doing. Okay. Dope, dope. 
Okay, at this time, I, I know I have some. Uh, Salve Mommy's here. Uh, she had what something up? for me. Can you can you kind of help me out with this sure. step, uh, honestly? So, okay, I got we got some hats here, right? L.A. Okay. all day. There you go. That's for him. L.A. all day. Okay. I will rock these. Some. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to bring them all out at one time. Okay. Can you kind of help me out here? Help me. Ayúdame. I know Gifts. This, this is you right here. Yes. Come on. Come on. In, come on. In, come on. In. Help me. Here, like. Okay, so I'm not giving you a sweater prior. This is a shirt. Yes. Okay. And we have an artist. That shit is dope, man. Awesome. Salute. Salute. So this Hell is yeah. you right here? Yes, this one's me. Okay. And this is uh, the, the back of this t-shirt. It says God of the Death. So this t-shirt, um, I make it to honor the dead. The other is not so sure. Right on. Okay. Hell yeah. So you got to put that in. These are shorts to go with your shirt and your hat. On the kick it tip. All right. Hell yeah. I have another. It's an LA block letters from an artist um, from Argentina. He goes by. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I was going to say I'm nervous. But yeah, but he's an artist from Argentina. That's what's up. Block letters were the things we all grew up on with the first graffiti yes, over here. Okay, I'm not sure what these are. Oh yeah, so we have a lot of packages for, for be real. Oh these boy. Are from Cali Herb. Flavors. Yeah. Okay. Cali Herb. I'll do them. With a bunch of nice fruit. The rolling champ's going to have to roll that shit up. <laughs> Bunch of clothes and I say, what? Put them in the bag, and then we'll give it after at this grab bag. Right I'm there. geared up. I'm geared up. <laughs> Hell Shit. yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> Post it up. Geared up, flowered up, Hell edibled yeah. up. <laughs> oh my god! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! It's a good Wednesday. Okay. The hum day is real. Okay. All <laughs> Thank good. you. Thank you very much. I'm gonna much. put this, Salvi. I'm gonna put this in the bag. Yeah. So, Thank you, okay, Salvi. So here we go. Oh, thank you. You got it, my brother. Okay, one last promotion. This is for my boy at Cal Dental USA. He was, he he's half black, half Mexican. Let me tell you something. But this guy is a motherfucking hustler. This guy owns several dentistries. He decided to invest in teeth. So here's what he said. He goes, I want you to give B Real this. This is a gift from me. And here's what he said. He goes. This is a teeth whitening thing. So what? This is the opening one. Well, he opened it just for me to show oh, you, but the, the sealed one is inside. Teeth whitening. Please give it to him. It's my gift oh, to him. Oh, I am going to try that shit. So all day. You so, got to keep your teeth game real. Yes. <laughs> so so this is a gift once again from James Jones, Brian. James, I almost said Jim Jones. Fuck. James <laughs> yeah, Jones. Here you go, my brother. This is yours. Cousin of Jim. Yes. So... <laughs> Other than that, um, uh, Super Chats. Okay, am I, oh, you know what? I got to give Blanca, anything you want to promote, I'm, I, I got to give you this opportunity right now you, okay. before I give my shout-outs. Okay. 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 I know B's yeah. going to I know B's gonna be in, hold on, Bakersfield in May. Yep. And I'm going to be there, B. That's right. Hey, you got to come out. Yeah, yeah fuck I'm going to yeah. be there. Okay, so. No, no, come over here. Come over here. Oh God, come on, here. please. <laughs> come on. This is. Blanca, this is Blanca. Bobby D presents, you know, number one promoter. We got, we yeah, got to show love. Shout out to Bobby D. Shout out to Bobby. Come on, come on, go That's on. my bro, bro. All right, guys. So we have a few shows coming up. Bobby D presents. You already know. Uh, we have the Bakersfield one, which is called Baca Field Blaze, and that's on May twentieth with Ice Cube, Cypress Hill, mm -hmm. DJ Quick, Sugar Free Burner, and Baby Bash, Second to None, Dub C, Ronnie O, Joe Quilly. And then we have another one in New Mexico, too, that is with Ice Cube as well. We have a Neo coming to L.A. at the Greek Theater. We're back. And that one is going to be on April the 29th. It's uh, Mario and who else? Uh, Robin Thicke. Yes. She got excited for Neo <laughs> and Robin Thicke. Neo, yes, wow. I did get excited. 
I was supposed to go to the Florida one, but I, I you know, Ice Cube, I, I'll see you later. <laughs> um, and then what else do we got? We got um, the Latin Legends. We're back at the Microsoft, guys. So go get your tickets for the Latin Legends. We got MC Magic. You already know. Um, we have a lot of great artists for that one, Zap. Um, let me see. Now I'm getting nervous all of a sudden. All of a sudden. And then I'm going to promote my shows, guys. Don't forget, I have a Red Industry Carpet event yeah. Yeah. with Second yeah. to None, Little Blackie. We have um, Position uh, um, that works with Bone Thugs and Harmony. And then we have Baby Girl. We have Tony was supposed to try to make it to that one, but he has his shows on Sunday. We have Twixie. We have uh, Mia May, Baby Bash's artist. And um, who else? Killer Rosa. And that's black. Uh, that's uh, brought to you by Black Widow Sky Presents in Chicano Hollywood. You know what Chicano Hollywood is? Yeah. yeah. Shout out to them and Jay and the crew guys. And then what else? For all you white folks, not just kidding. <laughs> we got she, <laughs> Sheena Easton and Taylor Dane, and that's gonna be at Laguna, the Dana Point uh, Festival, guys, with the well watching. So go watch those whales. Watch the whale. <laughs> and go and uh, follow us at Bobby D Presents, Uncle Snoop's Army, and Blanca Bobby D. Hell yeah. Boom. Hell yeah. Sh- Sheila Easton. I haven't heard heard of her in a long ass time. Yeah, that's a long ass time. Okay. Her and Taylor Dane. All good. B, you got any shout outs you want to give? Uh, I just want to shout out you for having me up here and Boom. the fans that uh, be fucking with you and, Thank you, and, and that fuck with us and. Uh, you know, the people here on the West Coast that, that hold guys like us up, that, you know, that Thank appreciate you. real hip hop and appreciate the flat, the, the platforms that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. we've created outside of just the music to be able to educate people and, yes. and bring something positive, man. So salute to you, man. I always have a good time fucking Thank covered you, on your show. Yeah, I, let me, first and foremost, let me say this. The last time that I was there, every time that I was there. I want to thank the whole, and I, I'm just going to say the Be Real team, the Dr. Green yeah. team. They've always have made me feel welcomed. And to me, that is a blessing because, you know what, I, I feel I feel, I feel, feel blessed being there, man. I, I feel like family when I go there. And likewise here, man. You know, I think that's why it always works so fucking yes. easy. You know what I'm saying? Thank we you, snap man. into each other's shit, and it's like... You know, we have some random conversations. Yes. There's some very concentrated, but it's always dope. Yes, man. So, I, like, once again, I want to, and I want to thank the Insane Asylum. Yeah. You know, your crew. We have the Rodin Raider Warriors. That's right. So, Salute to all y'all. Yeah. So, <laughs> once again, thanks uh, to Be Real. Thanks to, uh, like, the whole team. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, my team. Uh, News of Norbies will be on tomorrow, if not Friday. All depends on how he feels. But news of Norway will we give you the ghetto news from an unprofessional perspective. <laughs> how, you, how you feel, Doc? <laughs> yeah. we, don't, we don't give it to you like the white man. We give it to you from the hood, from the fucking gut. Okay? We don't hide anything. And then I'm going to give a shout-out to Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise. He'll fix your, uh, what the fuck, uh, transmission, your brakes. Uh, um, and there was another one, Alex. <laughs> your life. <laughs> I'm selling eggs. He's selling eggs right now. Eggs. I know eggs are a shortage. Yeah, they so went eggs. Seven dollars a card, doc. Yeah, <laughs> no, man. I'm so, selling so, bulk. Oh, he does your smog illegally or legally? No, nah, I'm only playing. <laughs> but he'll do that. And then my to my son, be scandalous uh, for once again um, helping me promote this. We're gonna have um, Yuck Mouth. That's right. In. Salute he, to Yuck, man. Yeah, Legend. He's gonna be doing another another. Uh, S- smoking with the wizard. Boom. Then let me give a shout out to the hip hop Jedi. Okay. Then I want to, I want to shout out four special people in my life. Okay. Four special people, but these are my day ones. And I'm not even going to mention the men. I'm going to mention the women. Okay. Because if you get women that support you, that love what you do, love what you stand for. It's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Okay. One of my day ones I have to announce is Blanca from Bobby D. That's right. Salute Blanca. Yeah. Blanca has been here since day one, and she is a blessing to me. So all of these women, I will never tell no. Whenever they ask me, anytime, whatever you want, yes, let's do it. That's right. My second one, Salvi Mami. 
Salvi okay. Mommy has been a blessing to me. You know what? One day I oh, I hit her up on Instagram and I said, hey, listen, I need a female today. I know it's kind of a short notice. Can you be here in a couple of hours? She said, yes. And Cracked ever since then, she's been, she's in my um, documentary, my mixtape doc. Yeah, she, yeah. She's in it. Salute. Yeah. So she's been a blessing, you know. And by the way, you know what? Uh, she just had a, a daughter. So congratulations. congratulations. Yes. Yes. Um, my third is Erica from B and B Entertainment. She's manager for Bella, probably the hottest Chicana rapper in in LA right now, or California, whatever. But Bella's fucking dope. But Erica B and B, like she is like Tony. But anybody fucking with you, I'll throw putazos for you. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how dope she is. Erica's dope. And another one, another. She's my day one, but I've been working with her. It's a music. Be looking out uh, uh, in the summertime. Uh, Magic Girl, she's one of our, our moderators. I had her here maybe four or five times. She's actually not only a singer, a writer, but a mortician. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that's that. <laughs> so, yeah. So she, she says she'd rather fuck with the dead than the living. Hey, I hear so. that. <laughs> Sometimes that's easier. <laughs> yeah. So I got to give a shout out to, to those four. And be in, in Bakersfield, when we do that show, I'm going to introduce you to her. And I'm hoping that possibly when her EP drops, maybe you can give her possibly a hell yeah, or hell yeah, we'll okay. put her on, yeah, for so sure. Other than that, uh, I want to thank Pedro. Thank you for being here. You know, you know. Let me say this: if anybody has any problems with your Instagram, okay, hit up Pedro. Honestly, <laughs> Pedro. hit up Pedro. I'll, I'll put him on my story tomorrow where you guys can follow him. If, if there's the fucking hood rat or a hood vato. Hate it on your fucking page and they get you deleted. There's a lot of fucking haters, bro. Yes, hit him up. He will help you on Instagram. Okay, hey, so. I, I want to piggyback off something you said, yes. you know, to celebrate, like, certain women, right? Like, yes. so for me, it's like, one, my mother, right, who allowed me to be me and showed me a strength in a different way. Yes. Than, than the strength that my father showed me. It was a different kind of strength, a woman's strength, like raising a man type shit. You know what I mean? Yes. And like, you know, without having a certain direction, like her running a line on me and then believing in, in the shit that I was I was trying to do. Um, the other, Send Dog's Mother Nieves yes. for introducing me to my spirituality and faith. And also having faith in, in what we were doing, like yeah. saying, hey, look, people may not believe in what you're doing, but you believe and believe that it's it's and if it's right, it will happen for you. But you got to put the work in. Yeah. So she taught me that. And, and my homeboy, uh, Grego's mother, who was like, you know, the one who was always watching out for us. She was like making sure within a watchful eye, we were partying and doing all our crazy shit. But over us, she was watching, yeah. making sure that she we weren't doing going too crazy. Like she knew that she was seeing us do some crazy shit, but like not letting us go too far, being the watchful eye that our mothers yeah. couldn't really be. Yeah. Right? And and the and the and the last but not least to my wife for being with a hip hop artist, which is probably as a woman one of the hardest things to do because of the yes. nature of what this business is yes. and how people react towards you from fans to to women, you know, and some of the the times that you not you may not be one thousand. Yeah. And you might slip and be human and, and, and fuck up. Yeah. And, you know, the strength that a woman has to forgive you for that and, and allowing you to grow and help you to grow and evolve out of that childish type of shit that we do as men sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So salute to those four women for helping me evolve into what I am today. That's a beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful thing. So, when it's, yeah, much love, much uh, respect to all you women out there. I'm going to say something. One time, I'm a Swami baby, like a lot of us are, okay? Yeah. I met Julio at the Swami, Julio yeah, G. Right. Much love and respect to Julio G. And um, I remember this one guy from Long Beach, and it doesn't matter where he was from, but he came up to me and started talking shit to me. I was only like 13 years old. And he was in his 20s already, okay? And he was like, where are you from? And I don't know why he fucking asked me where I was from. But my mom didn't speak a lot of English, but she understood it. 
My, yeah. my same thing with my dad. They were both from Mexico, and they didn't speak, but they knew when somebody was trying to get aggressive. So my mom took a pole from the fucking stand and clocked that motherfucker <laughs> over the fucking forehead. I, all I remember beat was hearing bong, and that motherfucker started bleeding. She goes, "No, señora, por favor, no, señora." Okay, and I told my mom, "What the fuck? Like, like, what the fuck happened?" He goes, "He was trying to fight you. I'm here to protect you." Let me tell you something. Be careful with fucking with the mother's children. That's right. They'll okay? stand up. They will stand up. They be fucking become lions. So much love and respect to all the women out there. That's so, right. B, thank you once again, Carnal. Muchas gracias, hermano. Thank you for having for me, taking brother. the time. Okay. You know, let me say this. B didn't have to be here. Okay. Um, he could be anywhere in the world, but he chose to be here today. So I want to thank him for that. And I want to thank the insane asylum. I want to thank the whole, once again, the Dr. Green Thumb uh, um, uh, team. So much love and respect to you guys. I, I would like to have here, and I'm calling you guys out, uh, E-Zone and C-Minus. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, they got to come. Smoking with the wizard. Oh, E-Zone would definitely have fun doing yeah. this shit. Yeah, so. All day. All love to you guys. So much respect. So once again, I don't even know how to fucking close, but I'm going to say good night. Much love. Respect. Uh, you go, go ahead and do the super chat. Hurry up, bro. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Norbert. Yeah, we got some super chats. Um, uh, LX300 dropped $5. He said, be real, does uh, smoking weed make you think the earth is flat? No. <laughs> okay, uh, American Cholo dropped $10. He said, great conversation. Thank with you. The fire. Thank you. Um, Ace Mac Originix Drop five dollars. He said, "Bring out King Arthur so Tony can hit it." <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Um. And uh. And that's his first super chat on um. So uh. Let me see. Jason Ramirez dropped uh nine ninety nine. He said, "Yo, Mister Be Real, perform Cuban ne necktie live at the next jam." I will. That's one of my favorite Cypress joints. Cuban neckties. It's, it mugs like. Did a crazy ass beat there and it allowed me to snap on it. So I, I will. Okay. Um El Bobo dropped uh five dollars. He said all of us in the chat, we're in the audience right now. People watching online would only smoke listening to the show. Oh good. Salute. All good. Okay, and uh Active LA dropped nine ninety nine. He said a lot of good Los Angeles history in this episode. Radio Radiotron is a real West Coast history. Rest in peace to Shabadoo and Pop and Taco. That's and, uh, right. Okay, yes. Um, RC dropped uh, four ninety nine. He said, "How was working with the Simpsons and how did that come about? Any uh, future collabs with London Symphony Orchestra?" Oh uh, yeah, uh, they asked us if we wanted to be in one of the episodes called Homer Palooza, which Homer goes on the road and hell yeah. You know, and we we're like, hell yeah, because I mean, we're all Simpsons fans, and yeah. you know, then they came up with the whole thing with the London Symphony Orchestra that we stole it from Peter Frampton. <laughs> and then what's funny is that we had a conversation with the London Symphony Orchestra after a, a post we did on Twitter, you know, reposting that whole shit. We thought like we should do something, and so the conversation happened that we were going to do a, a symphony thing, which is one of yes. the things we're doing in Denver. Um, f to celebrate the Black Sunday album is rocking with the symphony. So that idea was birthed through that whole shit Hell yeah. with the Sim with the Simpsons. Hell yeah, Black Sunday with a symphony. Okay, uh, one more. We got DJ Pass dropped three forty nine. Uh, I mean, DJ Pass three forty nine. He dropped nine ninety nine. He said, "Good to see B blessing the room. Much love from the Sana Silent fifty one fifties family." That's Hell right. yeah, salute. Okay, sh shaman girl. Drop uh one eight seven. Drop twenty dollars. She said, "Um, love seeing you on Rodium B." Thank you. Uh, when are you and Lizzy dropping the Psycho Realm al album collab? Or, uh, it's or called it's called Real Psycho. Real Psycho collab. My bad. Yes, yeah, Real Psycho with Psycho Less and myself. Uh, we're just gonna be dropping it song by song. We don't really have a t uh, a, a solid date yet, but like he just finally mastered. A lot of the shit, so oh. we're like going through it now. Um, it's gonna be dope. It's different, you know. Yeah. Psycho Less is a fucking genius. It's crazy. Like, you know, we kick it with him on a daily. He's yes. part of our show yes. and stuff like that. So, 
you know he's sort of real casual and mellow but like when you hear like the beats he's knocking and and some of the verses he's been my man's a fucking genius so okay. I, I can't wait for motherfuckers to hear it hell yeah uh much love and respect to cycle last m- once again and we should bring you back for smoking so uh, oh yeah we got to bring him up here hell yeah other okay. than that, man, you know what? I don't have nothing else to say, but once again, thank everybody for tuning in. And i like to say this from the heart. Look, this, this podcast only exists because of you fans. Without you fans, let me tell you something. I ain't shit, period. Just like that. So I want to thank all you fans out there. You know, yesterday I was with, uh, let me give a shout out to Baby Bash, MC Magic, uh, Little Rob, everybody that was at the show in Garden Grove. They showed me mad love. MC Magic put me on stage. He introduced me. He gave me the mic. It's funny, B, how I could talk shit on this mic, but when I was in front of a fucking crowd, <laughs> that shit was a, different, it's man. That's a different game, man. That's a different fucking game. I was fucking got nervous. Like, I, got, <laughs> I got cotton mouth and I don't even smoke. I hear you. you know? Hey, Tone, I got five more. Okay, go ahead, bro. Hurry up. Okay, Javi G dropped $2. He said, I shared that today. Word up, B and Tony. I don't Thank know what he's talking about. Uh, play it 3D. Uh, yeah, play it 3D, drop $5. He said, did you ever meet Nipsey Hussle or Tupac? If so, have a story with them that you can share. I, I met both of them, kicked it with both of them. Tupac a little bit more because he was the homie. He, yeah. he would, uh, he, there was a couple times where he came to see us while yeah. we were playing in the Bay. And he would like accompany us. You know, he'd yeah. have his fucking 38 special with him with an ounce of green weed and We'd party out and he'd have our backs in, in some of the places. And, and uh, that was a trip because he was a real motherfucker, you know. Hell yeah. And uh, Nipsey, he was a cool dude. We didn't really kick it like that. But, like, every time he showed respect and, and uh, he was always on the grind, man. And I, I always respected his grind because, you know, he didn't really get his, you know, props till you know, later and unfortunately right, right before right. he passed. But you see, you know, that he had the potential and and the talent to actually push through. It was just a matter of time when he connected and, he, yeah. and then he finally did. And uh, rest in peace, man. You know, he, he was a good dude from, from you know, my experiences yeah. with him. How many more, Alex? Okay, um, we have like five more right here. More? Yeah. <laughs> okay, hurry up. Just drop it. That's All okay. Right. Anthony Lana dropped four ninety nine. He said, "How was it performing at the gathering? And are artists missing out?" Yeah, artists are missing out. The gathering's pretty exciting. It's a little, it's a little trippy, and you can't take anything personal when they're throwing shit on stage at you or around you. Yeah, uh, you just gotta absorb it and have fun. But it's it's fun. The gathering of the Juggalos is is a dope experience. Mike Aldrich dropped um, $5. He said, shout out to Tony. This is the best interview I've seen all year in any podcast. Well, all right. Be Real is dope. Is a dope interview. Thank you. Well, all right, child. USC. Uh, Love Them Killers dropped uh, $10. They said, uh, thanks, Tony, for having Be Real back on Rhodium Radio. Hey, B, any plans on a dispensary in Arizona? We need that fire, B. Much love from Rhodium Radio, the Dr. Green Show, and it's a Saint Asylum. Thank family. you, sir. Uh, yeah, we're working on something in in AZ now, and I'll actually I'll be performing out there April fifteenth for uh, for I can't remember which 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 show it is, but like um, we'll be popping it off. You you know you can get those dates at our our Doctor Green Thumb show. We'll be we'll be announcing it pretty soon. But yeah, AZ is one of the places we definitely want to pop off our Doctor Green Thumb locations. Okay. Hell yeah. Uh, Shazzy H Town dropped five dollars. She said, "Comida cubana o comida mexicana." Both, both, <laughs> both, man. That there's that you know, like they're both great. Okay, uh, Enrique Le, Le, Ledesma dropped uh, four ninety nine. He said, "What is what is your favorite song from your catalog that you sample a move?" Hold on. What is your favorite song from uh, your catalog that you sample a movie? Uh, probably um, the Pulp Fiction shit right before Make a Move. The the when Samuel Jackson is doing the Ezekiel passage, the path of the righteous man is oh, beset hell yeah. on all sides in the of the inequities and tyranny of evil men. That that shit right there. Um, that's. One of the dopest right there. Muggs caught that. And, like, I, I was hoping that the record company didn't fucking make them t- 
take that out and they didn't it ended up being a nice transition into our song make a move hell yeah um so yeah that that part hell yeah okay last question and yeah. okay ledesma dropped 499 he said what's the difference between miss pac-man and marijuana what the fuck okay. miss pac-man um, and marijuana yeah, yeah. um with, well, Miss Pac Man gobbles difference? balls, I believe. Yeah, she gobbles shit up all the time. I guess we smoke about as much as we smoke about as much as Miss Pac Man gobbles. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. I, got, I got an answer for that. I got the answer right here. What's the answer? It says everything gets hit, but I'm in love with Mary Jane. All, all right, right, I guess. Uh, I like my answer hit. better. Exactly. <laughs> We smoke as much as uh, Miss Pac Man gobbles. Yeah. She gobbles a lot. For a quarter. Yeah, for, for a, a quarter. quarter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All good. Okay, you know, that, that we're, done. we're done. Okay. Yeah. I forgot what the fuck I was going to say. But, anyways, you know what? Much love, much respect. What, what Norbert? You going to say something? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> much love to you guys. Not your granny's cookies once again. These are for UB. Oh, I'm taking those. Yeah, you give them to whoever you like. <laughs> These are uh, medicated. Thank you, sir. So once again, uh, follow once again, Be Real on, you know what? Support his podcast. Dr. Green Thumb Podcast is fucking very entertaining. And let me tell you something. Many times that I've too not very educational, especially watch the Joe Rogan Be Real last interview. That shit was dope. He, you know, I'll say this about Joe. Like his, his, his shit sometimes is random as, as, as ours is, but you know, like what he did tries to do is educate people on some shit they never heard before yes. and sometimes it's outlandish for some if you're not like all the way open-minded but for for others it hits like right in like yeah you know what i believe that shit and so yeah um joe is is a real motherfucker so he, he, and he's gonna always tell it like it is man so I, that's what i love about him and uh, i'll always support him and uh, yeah, it's a dope podcast. If you if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Yeah. And uh, salute to you, man. We uh, every time you you come on too, man. We gotta have you fucking back on because it's all it's family and it's all snap in Thank easy. Thank you, my brother. Word up. Thank you. You know what? The first time you were here, it was four hours. Yeah. Today is four hours. Hey, so it, it's tradition. Yes. The second time it was two hours, but the the, the trilogy today. Oh my god. Well, you know, that's how it happens. You know, yes, when it's it organic and, and it's just flowing, this is how it happens. Hell yeah. All right, everybody. Once again, I want to thank you guys. We're out of here. Much love, much respect to everybody. Everybody in the live chat, everybody who liked, comment, subscribed. Honestly, uh, much love and respect to you guys because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So other than that, have a blessed night. We're out of here. Stay blessed. We're, Dr. Green Thumb, be real. Much love. We're out of here. Take us away, Alex. Special shout out to Cal Dental USA. They taking dentistry to the next level. I'm wishing all the employees, you know, a real, real, real just safe quarantine, man, during this time. I know it's tough. But look, if you need a dentist from L.A. to the O.C., they got you covered, man. Like Hustle Man would say, the marathon continues. You heard? Hey, what are you doing? Sitting at work, looking at your phone, going back and forth between three social media apps. You just saw a busted looking tattoo and say, why would you get that? Or I'd just throw myself in the trash if that was on me. Well, don't wait. Opportunity is at your fingertips to get an amazing tattoo that will have your friends hating on you for having the coldest piece in the click. Call in your tat. Tina Howe is a head turner. Stop falling for that garage gangster that will quote hook you up unquote, misspelling your baby's name and making your loved one's portrait look like you ordered it off wish.com. All janky line work that's shakier than a virgin on prom night. Treat yourself like you were those melted laundry basket looking shoes wrappers keep putting out. Yes, those things are ugly, but your tattoo won't be and it will look dope for a lifetime. When you're ready to get tattooed, DM me through Instagram or email bookwork310 at gmail.com.